Jim Turner, who for the second consecutive year is the leading scorer in the American Football League on the regular season, places the ball on the 40-yard line with a yard jet. Deep man for Kansas City, or Robert Holmes. And I believe Ed Polilak is also back there. Here comes Turner forward. He boots the ball. The game is underway, and here's Jim Gordon. Going down to Hayes at the 5. Hayes up to the 10. He's cutting to the 15 and going to his right to the 20. Across the 20 to the 25. Stone his feet to the 30-yard line. And bang down finally at about the 33. Wendell Hayes and Robert Holmes, a bit of a surprise to us as the men set to run back for kickoff. So Kansas City will take over the ball for the first time this afternoon with 14 minutes and 48 seconds to go on the 33-yard line. He was looking to open up an alley on the right side to possibly go all the way, the way Abe Wichon used to do it for the San Francisco 49ers, but the uh, Jets moved over to the left side and plugged that alley. This is the scene that off operates out of that multiplicity of offensive formations. Out of the eye now, pitch out to the right side to Garrett to the 35-yard line, working his way toward the 40. And a stop short of the 40-yard line by Johnny Elliott, number 80 of New York. Kansas City will line up in that high formation directly behind center, runs almost everything out of that formation. It is, uh, according to some of the Jets' defensive coaches, the type of thing that will bother you only if, it lets, if you let it bother you. It can be solved. Call for Kansas City. The ball is on the 39. Second down with four yards to go on the pickup. Again, the eye formation behind Len Dorsen. Now the eye dissolves against two wide receivers coming to left side. Tipped on the outside. Otis Taylor, the most dangerous man against the Jets, on the inside on that wide side. Garrett carries the ball across the 40-yard line and has stopped at about the 43. He was looking for the first down and might have it. That is the second straight play that they have run at Jerry Fulton's side of the line, and Joe, I think they're testing that shoulder. Yes, they are. He's playing with a harness. Incidentally, on the previous play, he came through very quickly, Jim, but the play moved inside of him. About a foot to go, I'd say, Jim. Just about a foot short of the first down, so it's a third down situation with one yard to go showing on the board. The ball is officially on the 42-yard line. This is the wide receiver on the left side. Otis Taylor, wide receiver on the right side. Arbanis, number 84, is the tight end. Two men set now. They are not operating out of the eye. Two setbacks directly behind Dawson as he calls the signals. Turns around for a hand. Takes the hand off to Garrett. He's going to throw to his left side. Complete to home. Home to the 45-yard line of the 40. The 35 still in his feet. And banged out of bounds and around the 30-yard line. Billy Barrett coming across the right safety. Jim, a fine play with some tremendous faking there in the backfield. Uh, everybody was moving as if they had the ball. And the uh, Jets were a little bit sucking on the play. The uh, men going inside, Dawson got off a fine pass. He's a very dangerous man uh, in throwing that ball. And an unusual play. They've got a fairly good front wall with only a yard to go. The Jets, as Joe pointed out, I think were looking for just that quick line play. They didn't get it. Then they got a big pickup. The ball is now on the New York Jet 28-yard line. First and 10 to go for Kansas City. Once again, Dawson sets two men wide, this side of the right side. Otis Taylor, the outside man, tips it on the inside with the two men wide on the right side. The rest of the team set up the setbacks in an eye formation, a handoff in the backfield, just the line of scrimmage and stops dead there. Looked like Johnny Elliott coming in to make the stop. Along with Al Atkinson, number 62. The ball is on the 28-yard line now, second down, and still 10 yards to go, no gain for Kansas City. It is a bitterly cold day in New York. The temperature will fool you. It's only around 32, which doesn't sound bad, but the winds are gusting over 30 miles an hour, and it's a tough day down in the field. The field has been frozen for the past two days. Two wide receivers on the right side again. Setbacks dissolve out of the eye formation. They've got a slot back to the right side now, and the receivers go out very wide to work right and left side. He's going to his right, and it is incomplete. Met for home, and almost picked up at the 25-yard line by Paul Crane. Robert Holmes had that one bounce off his fingertips. Taylor was hit pretty good as he left the line of scrimmage on the, on the left side, Jim. The, the, by the left defensive man, he uh, was playing right end on the play. And, of course, the, the, was, the ball was not intended for him. It was for the under receiver. But they're playing him a lot tighter. 
So for Kansas City, Joe, it'll be a third down situation and still 10 yards to go. The eye formation now. Three men directly behind Len Dawson. He turns around, fakes the handoff. He's still got it. Drops to his 40. He's getting a rush. He's hit. They got him at the 40. Johnny Elling with tremendous pursuit. Carl McAdams is in there too, Jim. He's done a fine job since he's come back. Incidentally, this is not the best spot I would say to kick from because the wind comes from between the stadium and the scoreboard and it's flowing very briskly in that direction, Jim. As Dick Lynch pointed out before the game, these two teams are known for their, their kickers, their field goal men, and this could be one of the toughest days for both teams in that department. Justin Cross wins. Center route is in. He'll be trying one from the 47-yard line. A difficult chance. Up in the air. Scaling short. It looks like it is falling short at the goal line. With a score, the Jets nothing and Kansas City nothing. They're silent on the field. More Jet football in just 60 seconds. There's still time to choose the gift for every man and young man on that Christmas list of yours. Right in the center of downtown Amsterdam, Ray's Clothes features clothing for men that is handsome in appearance and has superior wearing quality. Easy to wear, easy to care for. The smart collection of suits, sport coats, top coats, and all weather garments are leaders in the fashion world for men. At Ray's, nationally advertised permanent creased rest-on slacks team up beautifully with shirts and sweaters with equally famous names. Most men like a luxury gift they might never buy themselves. Well, Ray's Clothes has many Christmas suggestions in clothing and accessories. Last-minute shopping will be a breeze when you stop in Ray's Clothes. They planned ahead for the final rush, and you'll still find one of the best selections in town at Ray's Clothes, 85 East Main Street in Amsterdam, open every night till 9 until Christmas. At Shea Stadium in New York, John Sellerwood has come on and attempted a 47-yard field goal effort, which fell short of the goal post. It was straight uh, headed for the upright, but fell short. So the Jets take over, first in depth in their own 20, start the first offensive play of the day again, Jim Gordon. Big Turner is wide receiver right, throw to the left side, completes the guard tower at the 35-yard line. He had a lot of room, Jim. There was nobody within five yards of him. George down the ball right there. He went down to his knees to make the catch, and with the thundering hurt closing in, didn't make another move. It is big turn of then Joe, not Don Maynard. Turner, fine receiver, comes out wide on the right side. Star wide to the left. Namath is looking over the middle. It is complete to Lyman. Lyman turned to the 45-yard line, but he's hit by three men and slammed down hard by Johnny Robinson. Lamb is really put down into the ground and the fans get on Kansas City a bit, but that's the kind of a game it's going to be. Over the middle, Jim, that's a vulnerable area in many, many teams, and Kansas City may be no exception to that. Two plays then from the 20-yard line, the New York Jets have the ball on their own 44, first down and 10 yards to go. We're in the first quarter, there is no score, and the fans really haven't stopped yelling since they started. Two wide receivers right side, single wide receiver to the left in New York. Unusual formation with Emerson Spoozer going to in motion to his left side. Hand off now to Snell across the 50 to the 45 where he stopped. Matt Snell with a fine slide through the middle. Bobby Bell made the stop coming in from left linebacker. Fine trap play, Jim. Real fine one. Uh, Dave Hyman was so elated about the part that he played in it that when he went back, he was dancing on his toes, uh, keeping his hands high in the air. Uh, because uh, they're mixing up their plays now. One thing the Jets know is that Dawson is a very bad catch-up quarterback. For some reason, this is a, a phobia with him, and the Jets want to get out in front as quickly as they can. First down, first down. They just came out with the chains and measure for the first. So for Matt Snell, he was looking for 10 yards, and he got 10, plus just enough. 47, the ball on the 47-yard line. First and ten to go New York, the first time the Jets have been in Kansas City territory. Again, two wide receivers to the right side. Sauer is the inside man. Big Turner is the outside man on the right side. Boozer goes in motion to his left side. A hand off to Snell. He tries the middle of the line. Picks up perhaps two yards when they clog it up and drop it. 
Forrest back, actually, never off his feet. Buck Buchanan got him. He's just all league, Jim. He's all NFL and a real fine lineman. Buchanan made the all-star team. I don't know how many times in a row that, that, that's been, but he is fine. He's big, Jim. That's going to be one of the big battles of the afternoon. Buchanan against uh, Matt Snell. It is a pickup, uh, three yards, second down and seven yards to go for New York. Once again, Namath is looking to throw to his right side. It is complete to Lyman. Lyman is up to the 30-yard line. Tries to cut it. He breaks one tackle there. Drops back, though, to the 35 and is down to about the 33-yard line. Beat Lyman. And Namath hasn't missed yet. He hit Willie Lanier and knocked him completely down, Jim, to break the tackle. Lanier is a heavy man. He calls defensive signals. He's a good one. Uh, one of the best in the business. His only trouble is he has a tendency to get very heavy, and he needed all the weight he, he could uh, muster that time and did not stop the ball carrier. Ball is on the 34-yard line. First and 10 to go again for New York. In a spectacular march so far. They're inside Kansas City territory. His name is looks to his left side. Again, Emerson Blusick goes in motion to the left side with two wide receivers right to hand off to Snell. Snell through the center of the line and picks up about three yards where he's finally driven back. But again, is still on his feet. Buck Buchanan, 86. So far, Joe Namath has not made a bad call. Every move of the Jets has been able to pick up yardage for them. In the air, he's three for three. The ball is on the 31-yard line. Second down and seven yards to go on the three-yard pickup by Matt Snell. Namath drops back. He's looking to his left side. He's throwing to the release man. It is closer to the 25-yard line. Drives to the 20 and finally goes out of the 20. With a tremendous effort. Tremendous individual effort, Jim. He was hit twice before he finally was brought down, and he's made it a first down on the 20-yard line. Real fine safety valve play, and uh, Emerson took full advantage of it. It is early in this football game. It's 7.43 to go in the first quarter. But the Jets haven't looked this good on their home turf all year long. The ball is on the 20. First and 10 to go in New York. Again, two wide receivers to the right side. Single wide on the left. The hand off to Snell or Boozer. Boozer goes through. Picks up three and is ran back behind the line of scrimmage. Buck Buchanan again. So the New York Jets, even with this tough win today, within good field goal range on their first drive downfield, has the ball on the 18-yard line with a pickup of two yards by Matt Snell. No score, seven minutes and six seconds to go. Jets taking plenty of time in the huddle now. Break the huddle. Again, on the outside, on the right side, Big Turner. Inside him is George Starr working on the double flanker. Nobody wide on the left side this time. Two setbacks behind Joe Namath. Turns around, fakes the handoff. Now drops back. He's getting a rush. They put him down. Hits behind the line of scrimmage by Bobby Bell for a big loss. And the first time this afternoon, more because of the ground, I think, Joe. I think it was a broken play, Jim. Uh, he, he seemed to spin around and was looking for somebody to hand to. Boozer was standing there. He did touch Boozer as he spun with the ball. The Snell apparently drove ahead, but there must have been a mix-up. I'm, I'm assuming it was a broken play. And Namath, as he went back, lost his footing and was put down in his tracks. He was actually wisely going into the storm cellar with the team after him. That is the first loss of the afternoon, then, on the offense for New York. The ball is on the 28th, third down with 18 yards to go now. Pete Lamont is the tight end on the right side. Single receiver wide on the left is George Sauer. Big Turner on the right. The setbacks on either side of Joe Namath. Boozer on his left. Matt Snell on his right. Turns around, hands to Boozer, lances through tackle, gets across almost to the 20-yard line. Very hit from behind by Aaron Brown and Bobby Bell. Dick Lynch points out that Bobby Bell was on a blitz on the previous play, Jim, and that was what gummed it up. And Dick, or no, he played the fence long enough. Jim Turner comes in, so the New York Jets within field goal range, despite the tricky and gusting winds this afternoon, are looking to get on the board. Ball will be down on about the 27-yard line. They'll be trying from the 27 from the left side hash mark. One of the Casey men went offside. The ball is not snapped. It is up now by Turner, and it is good. The score, the New York Jets three in Kansas City. Nothing now. Here's a word from Valentine. Beer must be ice and be light. 
on the scoreboard three to nothing over Kansas City with five and a half minutes left to go in the first quarter. Now Turner kicks off as Hayes and Holmes are deep again Jim Gordon. It is coming down short and about to Holmes at the 10 up to the 15 up to the 20 yard line. Goes into center field across the 25. Breaks one tackle. Still on his feet at the 25. Hit from behind by Big Turner who drops him at the 30 yard line. Just short of the 30. Tough runner Holmes. He's just 5'9", but goes 220 pounds, and he's very tough to get a hold of. So for Kansas City, trailing by a score of 3-0, it'll be first and 10 to go on their own 28-yard line. Randy Beverly is the cornerback for New York in the right side, Cornell Gordon on the left. Out of the eye formation, they dissolve and send two men out wide to the right side with two setbacks behind Len Dawson. Dawson drops back to the 20. He's getting a rush. Goes to his right side. Completed the right side of Taylor who goes down at the 40-yard line. Cornell Gordon was covering his man, and I believe it was Otis Taylor got between Gordon and the thrower, Len Dawson, who almost got hit as he got the ball off. That'll be a first down for Kansas City. With the ball now spotted on the 41-yard line. New York Jets three and Kansas City nothing first quarter. It's going to say capacity out to Shea Stadium, but I'm not sure what capacity is, Joe. They haven't really reached it. They keep improving on it. I would assume we've got a new AFL record again uh, for attendance, Jim. There's that eye formation again with three men set directly behind him. It dissolves. Two receivers go out, one wide on the right side, one on the left. Two setbacks on either side of Dawson now. He drops back to the 35 and throws complete to the left side of the 50-yard line, cross of the 50, and is hit by Billy Baird, number 46, coming in from right safety. Fred Albanis made the catch, Jim. This was a quick break. Uh, Dawson got the ball almost released as quick as he got it, which shows that he's... Uh, uh, showing respect for the drive which uh, the Jets are putting on. He has got, of course, to a lesser extent, the same problem that plagues Joe Namath, knee problems. And he doesn't want to get hit even one time if he can avoid it. He's taken Paul Crane out, and he's got five defensive backs in there, something which he's been doing uh, when the opposition throws the ball. Arbanus is the tight end on the right side this time. Fitz wide on the left side. Otis Taylor wide receiver right side. Dawson is looking over the middle. He's dropping way back. Getting a rush. He goes to his relief man on the right side across the 50 to 45 to the 40 to the 35. He's across the 35 to the 30-yard line. And Hayes is hit as he goes down on the right side of the field by Billy Bear. It's a good screen, Jim. Uh, they blocked Ralph Baker out of there, which gave running room to the ball carrier. They're down around the 30. Good move by Kansas City. It's now first and ten to go with the ball down on the New York Jet 29-yard line. Seventeen yards on the play. Dawson to Wendell Hayes. Dawson calls the signal. Scooped out to the right side to Garrett. Garrett up to the 30-yard line is practically the 30-yard line the line of scrimmage. Sullivan made the stop. Uh, he's playing with that harness. You'd never know it, Jim. He's got good speed breaking in there. And he hung on to the ball carry. Garrett, very deceptive. Very fine, elusive runner. Fast, quick. Good move. Second down situation coming up for Kansas City. The score is New York Jets 3 and Kansas City nothing with 2 minutes and 21 seconds to go in a very fast-moving first quarter. 
This is just the second time that Kansas City has had the ball. They won the toss and elected to receive. The Jets called their drive. 47-yard field goal attempt into the wind failed for them. Jim Turner scored for New York. Once again now, Dawson splits his backs on either side. Two sets back there. Drops back. He's looking over the middle. Now looks up and hits his man just across the 25-yard line. Hit there. Breaks the tackle. Back on his feet again to the 15. And Hayes picks up two more across the 15-yard line. Larry Grantham and Jim Carroll had shots at him. And they couldn't hang on with Hayes making good moves on both of those tackles. One minute and 45 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Jets working again with a four linebacker setup against Len Dawson. Randy Beverly is back in at cornerback this afternoon from New York on the right side. Cornell Gordon is guarding the left side. Richards and uh, Baird are the safeties. High formation directly behind Len Dawson. It breaks now on the count. And set with two setbacks, one on either side. Wide receivers also right and left side. Dawson hands off now. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage or just about on it. As Ralph Baker cracks across and diagnoses the players that come through tackles. One minute and five seconds to go in the quarter. The clock continues to run. For Kansas City then. Down center route is always a dangerous man. He'll be ready unless they can move the ball here. They've still got another chance. Second and ten to go for the Chiefs. And off to Hayes. Hayes cracks across the ten. Picks up perhaps two more yards. He's hit from behind. And dropped there. Ralph Baker makes the stop of Wendell Hayes. 29 seconds to go in the quarter. Ball will be spotted, Joe, on the left side hash mark as the play goes and gets underway. He's moved this team very well, Jim. Uh, Dick Lynch points out that Grantham is covering over for Randy Beverly, and, of course, this week is the uh, jet pass defense. It'll be interesting to see if he goes uh, in that area again. Ball is on the 10, third down and six yards to go. Dawson is set. Hands off. Fakes the hand off. He's being rushed. He throws complete behind the line of scrimmage, and he's dropped down there. Pitch on the left side. Pitch number 25 is stopped, called by Paul Crane, with time running out in the quarter. The score, the New York Jets 3, Kansas City nothing more. Jet football after the message from Score. Score presents the four Jets. I'm Big Turner, and we're the four Jets. Mr. Jim Turner. Bah. Country Don Maynard. Bah. Brother Matt Snell. Bah. Bah. Hey man, I don't dig my hair with any messy grease and slick on that don't ride. Don't ride, don't ride. Ba 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 with a little water and your hair holds like it ought to. Oh, baby, that's the score. That's the score. That's the score. Like the coach says, score if you're going to play. Here at Chase Stadium in New York, we move into the second quarter of play. Kansas City has the ball at the New York Jets 16-yard line. Fourth down and 10 yards to go. And as play is presumed, uh, we can expect, uh, presumably, Jan Sunderwood coming in. Yes, he's on the field now, standing at the 24-yard line. Here to tell you about it, Jim Gordon. There's the snap. The ball on the 24. It is up by Sunderwood, and it is good. With the score, the New York Jets 3 and Kansas City Chiefs 3. There's time out of the field for just football in just 60 seconds. Oh, look, Ted, the Kellys in the parade with their new car. Yeah, Mavis, I see. What is it? Sure looks expensive. One of those big, fancy European cars, I'll bet. Mavis, that's an American Motors Ambassador SST. No more expensive than a lot of Fords or Chevys. If I know Marianne Kelly, I'll bet they chintzed on the extras to get a car that looks like that. That Ambassador has air conditioning. 
individually adjustable reclining seats. Oh, and you know so much about the Kelly's Ambassador. Well, air conditioning is standard equipment, not an option on all new ambassadors. Ted, you know, we really could use a new car. Could we... Mavis, go... I've already ordered our new ambassador. <laughs> Wait till I see Marianne Kelly. See Haberick American Motors having the most exciting auto show in town. Whatever you want in a car, they have it ready for immediate delivery. Haberick American Motors, 16 Green Street, Amsterdam. Off for George Knox, the rookie, and Mike Battle, another rookie. So, two youngsters back there for the New York Jets. Deep as Centerwood places the ball on the 40-yard line and is about to kick off to the New York Jets before over 62,000 here at Shea Stadium in this AFL playoff game. Sandra Wood about to come forward. The ball blew off the kicking tee. Winds of up to 32 miles an hour in some gusts here at Shea Stadium. But the sun is shining, and we have a tie ball game, 3-3. Three three. All right, there's the whistle. Sandra Wood comes forward. So meets ball. Ball is in the air, and again, here is Jim Gorsh. Coming down to knock at the 5. He's got battle in front to the 10, to the 15, to the 20. Cuts the midfield to the 25, to the 30. He breaks loose there to the 35-yard line. Still on his feet. Picks up two more yards, and it finally drops. At the 38-yard line. Tremendous run back by George Knox. Great individual effort, said Jim. He's husky, bulky, and he can really move, and he did. We pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Jets Radio Network. This is your New York Jet station in Amsterdam, New York, WCSS, two and a half minutes after two o'clock. It is a tie game, 3-3, three, three, the New York Jets has the ball on their 37. Name of the back going left side to Boucher, drops the ball at 35. Emerson was turning before he had his hand on it. Uh, Joe is getting very fine protection, uh, Jim. They're keeping everybody out, giving him plenty of time to throw. We just as Pooza turned, as you pointed out, dropped the ball. Turned, turned going away. So I think that's the first incompletion he's had. He had to eat the ball once out. I think that's the first one we've had. Yeah. 14 minutes and 27 seconds remaining in the first half. The score is tied 3-3. Three, three. The New York Jets and the Kansas City Chiefs in the playoffs here in the first round. Namath drops back to the 30. He is looking to his left side. He throws a bullet. It is incomplete. Bent on the left side to George Shower, but he threw it out of bounds. George was tightly covered inside. His only chance was to lean across, and it was just too far, far away from it. So the ball remains on the 37, third down, and still 10 to go for New York. A contrast here with the way they opened up in the first quarter the first time they got their hands in the ball with Namath moving them like the perfect general. Almost no sunshine left on the field now. It is cold. Temperature hovering around the freezing mark, but gusting winds as high as 30 miles an hour. Big Turner goes wide to the right side. George Sauer is wide on the left side. Snell set to the right side. They're getting good pass protection now for Namath. He is throwing over the middle. It is deflected and almost intercepted. Not quite. It was meant for Emerson Boozer cutting in from the left side behind the line of scrimmage. We'll have a punting situation for the first time this afternoon. Steve O'Neill comes in. He'll be kicking it from the left side hash mark. And will be kicking the ball from about his own 26-yard line. Jared and Mitchell are the deep end for Kansas City. O'Neill listed from his 27. It's up, Beauty, carrying way, way downfield. Down to the 15, and Jimmy Jones is chasing his man there. He hits him from behind, slows him down, and he's clobbered at the 12-yard line. Jim, the speed of... Was... Kansas City will be putting the ball in play from that point on the 12-yard line. Say, here's a great idea for you Jets fans. The weekend in New York during the holiday season. To make certain it's a fun pack weekend, make your headquarters at one of Lowe's eight great New York hotels to motor in. Stay at the skyscraping Americana and visit the star-studded World Box Supper Club or swing at the summit on the east side where you can dance away the night in the Gaucho Room. The city's squire and Lowe's Midtown Motor Inn are in the heart of the theater district. Take your pick. The Warwick, the Drake, the Summit, the Americana, they're all Lowe's. Each is different and each of them is made just for you. The reservations... See your travel agent or check the yellow pages for your local Lowe's reservation office. See you in New York. 
Here at Shea Stadium with 14 minutes to play in the first half of the ball game. The score is tied. The New York Jets 3 and the Kansas City Chiefs 3 of Jim Turner put the Jets on the scoreboard in the first quarter with a 27-yard field goal. John Stenerud on the first play of the second quarter put the Chiefs on the scoreboard with a 23-yard field goal, and that makes it what the score is at the moment, 3-3, three three, with Kansas City having just taken the punt from Steve O'Neill on its own 14-yard line. The Chiefs will be putting it in play first and 10 from that point when play is resumed very shortly here at <laughs> Shea Stadium. The cold weather we've been telling you about hasn't chilled the ardor or the attendance of more than 62,000 on hand. All right, Glenn Dawson brings the Chiefs out of the huddle here to tell you about it. The network voice of the New York Jets, Jim Gordon. Once again, Kansas City breaks the eye and sends two setbacks behind Len Dawson. It turns for a handoff. He goes to Wendell Hayes. Hayes across the 25 and is down there. Larry Grantham makes the uh, stop. Looks like Garrett now working out of the backfield, too. We'll try to pick him up for you there at the far end of the field right now. And uh, we had a message on the press box communication system a few moments ago. It sounded like they said Robert Holmes had to be taken out of the game. He suddenly became sick to his stomach. It is Garrick working the backfield now with Wendell Hayes. Pick up a four yards by Wendell Hayes that time. Dawson hands off for a center play right across the 20-yard line. It went to Mike Garrick. Ralph Baker makes the stop. Wendell Hayes carried the ball, not Mike Garrett. Score aside here, 3-3, 13 minutes and 16 seconds to go in the first half. Third down with seven yards to go now. Third, and I beg your pardon, it'll be third and three on the pickup. Third and three. Ball is on the 21-yard line. Garrett working in the backfield now with Wendell Hayes. They've got Otis Taylor wide on the right side. The eye dissolves to send Frank Tips out wide on the left side. Once again, Dawson drops back. He's getting past protection. He's being chased. He throws. It is it, it is complete to the 30-yard line. He stays in his feet and gets across the 35, the 25, rather, almost to the 31. He's stopped by Ralph Baker. Joe, I thought they were going to get to Len Dawson that time. It was a tremendous rush on him, but he eluded it and got off on a, it was a good one, as a matter of yes, fact. Yes, he had, he had Jets coming from each side and threw between them, Jim. It was a very fine individual effort. He ended up down around the goal line. That's, uh, that's how far he retreated to finally get rid of the ball. It was a good catch, too, Jim. It was caught in traffic. It is a first down play. First and ten to go now on the 28-yard line of the New York of uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. The Jets and the Chiefs side, 3-3. Three, three. Wide receivers left and right side again. Setbacks on either side of Len Dawson. Dawson drops back, getting fast protection now. Now starts to roll to his left and throws a long one for Otis Taylor. It is incomplete. Almost intercepted on the right side by Cornell Gordon, number 48. But when he deflected it, Taylor also had a second shot at it. Joe, I thought he was going to fork it out of the air. Got a lot of time to throw that time, Jim. Uh, the uh, Jets come in. Uh, I think it was uh, Steve Thompson who went high in the air, and then when he came down, was was blocked and uh, went down, so that Dawson got additional time in which to throw. Eleven minutes and fifty-four seconds remaining. Eleven minutes and fifty-four seconds remaining. Ball is on the 28-yard line. Second down, 10 yards to go for Kansas City in their territory in the first half. Dawson spins for a handoff now. Hayes breaks across the 30, gets up to the 35-yard line, and a tackle as he crosses the 35 by Paul Crane. He's hit from behind. Should be short of the first down by about a yard, perhaps a little bit less. We'll check as he moves the ball out. Third and one to go will be the situation here in a 3-3 game with Stenerud making the difference for Kansas City coming from behind as Jim Taylor had put the Chiefs on the scoreboard for the first time by a score of 3-0. You may remember, Jim, that uh, Dawson used uh, with a uh, third and short yardage uh, through a pass the last time. Dawson checks his alignment. The eye dissolves. He sends Arbanis out as his tight end on the left side now. Hands off for a line play. There's a flag the first one of the afternoon down. The Jets could have been offside on the long count as Hayes carried across with enough for a first down, but we'll wait for the official call. 
Looked like Johnny Elliott anticipating on the left side of the line. It is an offside play against New York, so the ball is moved across the 40-yard line up to about the 43. First and 10 to go for Kansas City in a 3-3 ball game with 11 minutes and 3 seconds to go in the first half. Wind seems to have died down a little bit, but it's still not a very pleasant afternoon for football with that hard field. At least it is dry. Dawson breaks up his eyes. He calls the signals now. Looks to his left side. He's looking to his left as he drops back. Still looking. He goes deep to the left side. It is incomplete. Arbanis, the tight end, had his hands on it. Couldn't hang on. He was covered very tightly by Billy Baird, number 46, and it looks like Baird might even be able to take it away from him. I thought he had it for a moment, Jim. Incidentally, Baird, uh, Grantham on the right side are double teaming, and uh, they're also double teaming uh, uh, Taylor. So the Jets are playing them very tight. Ball is on the 43. Second down, still 10 yards to go for Kansas City. The clock stopped with 10 minutes and 56 seconds to go in the second quarter. Boston breaks the huddle now. He's got Garrett working in the backfield with Wendell Hayes. Wide receiver on the right side is Otis Taylor. Left side is Frank Fitz. Tight end is Fred Arbanis working to the left side. Fakes the handoff. Now gives to Garrett who cracks across the middle of the 50. Still in his feet and hit from behind as he gets to the 45-yard line of the New York Jets by Verlin Big. Good draw play, Jim. They, he had a fine hole there and Garrett came wheeling through. Verlin Biggs had to come over from his right side to make the stop. Garrett a little bit slow coming, uh, getting up from his spot. He was hit from behind by Verlin Biggs, and any tackle today is going to shake you up a little bit. That field is hard. Paul Crane goes out. They put on another fifth defensive back. They anticipate that he'll probably go to the air at this stage. Garrett Richards and Cornell Gordon and Randy Beverly working in the backfield. Cornell Gordon, the right cornerback, uh, the left cornerback. On the play now, Dawson's looking to throw deep to the right side to the 10-yard line. It is incomplete to the five. With good coverage all the way down by Cornell Gordon. And as they turn around and take their positions again, Taylor, who's looking for the pass, reached out and patted Gordon as much as to say nice coverage. You notice Gordon was doing a lot of talking to Taylor as they were coming downfield, too. He uh, has a reputation for that, chatters all the time, uh, talks to him, and uh, kind of tries to upset their concentration. Matter of fact, in Miami, I know that one of their, when Timmy Hines almost had one last time, uh, purely on speed, all the way back, and for the rest of the afternoon, every time Gordon saw him, he said, call him Boots. <laughs> Calling him Boots. They had a little trouble Boots. He said one time, thought Hines was going to swing on it. Ball is on the 45-yard line. Second down with 10 yards to go. The eye formation again by Len Dawson. It breaks up. Arbanis takes position as a tight end on the left side. Two setbacks now. Either side of Dawson, he drops back to the 45. He's getting a rush. He throws deep to the left side. Metro Arbanis, it is knocked down by New York. Beautiful double coverage on the right side. Beautiful double coverage on the left side with Randy Beverly standing up, I believe, with Billy Bear. Jim, the disturbing part about the game is uh, where it's being played now. It's at the closed end of the stadium so that the wind does not affect the kicking. The two field goals have been kicked down here. And uh, incidentally, the Kansas City one was kicked after the quarter had ended so that Kansas City had the advantage of kicking in the protected end of the stadium. Dawson is unloading here for long gain attempts. He's got a third and ten situation now. The ball on the 45-yard line. So he needs the big ten. Despite the fact that they've got a fine field goal kicker and as Joe says, they're in the protected end of the stadium, it is still a tricky day out here for the field goal attempt. Setbacks on either side of Len Dawson. Wide receivers left and right side. He drops back. He's looking to throw. He's getting a rush. He's still being rushed. There's a flag on the play. He is hit as he unloads. It is knocked down. Incomplete on the left side. Paul Crane reached up and batted that one away. Let's see what the flag is all about. Jim, I can tell you this. Verlin Biggs, is this man strong? He took the man blocking him and pushed him right back into Dawson. Dawson shot over to the right side to get away, and Sylvan was there. He unloaded at that point. But Berlin Biggs has got to be tremendously strong. 
Good work by Paul Crane that time of breaking up the interception, but for Crane, the man would have been loose. The penalty is declined, a holding penalty against Kansas City, and has been declined. And the man they were holding was Philbin. No easy job. Somehow, you couldn't get a penalty. Well, it shows you how valuable he is even with that harness on, Jim. Great determination, great desire. Nine minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the first half. Vanderroot is going to have a tough one again. They're going to be punched. They're not even going to try the field goal. They're going to punch this one. He's too far back. Kicking the ball from about the 45-yard line. Lift the pair to a low skinning kick off big bounce. Coming down to the 10-yard line, Battle takes it there. He's surrounded. He's just across the 10, and they're picking him apart, driving him back across the 10. The score, the New York Jets 3 and Kansas City 3. Now here's a word from Valentine. Well, now that here's a break in the action, why not make the most of it by getting yourself a nice old Valentine beer? You know, nothing goes better when you're listening to Jets action, and nothing refreshes better after you've been working up a giant-sized thirst. Valentine's smooth taste is brewed to satisfy to get right down to the heart of your thirst. Not called the crisp refresher for nothing. 130 years of brewing experience goes into every Valentine. Brewed crystally clear, smooth and delicious, and then aged to make it precisely right. That's Valentine, and every label tells the whole story with three rings that stand for purity, body, and flavor. Nothing tastes as good as an ice-cold Valentine. So, take it from me. Hey, get your cold beer. Take the three ring sign and ask the man for Valentine Premium Lager Beer. The crisp refresher. Nine minutes and 39 seconds to play in the first half of the game here at Ice Cold Shea Stadium. For the score, the Kansas City Chiefs three, the New York Jets three. The Jets got their three and a 27 yard field goal by Jim Turner in the first quarter. And Kansas City got there, three and a 23-yard kick by Jan Stellarud in the second. Right now, the Jets are going to put the ball in play first and ten from their own ten-yard line. They come out of the huddle here to tell you about it again. The network voice of the New York Jets, Jim Gordon. Thank you, Sid. The New York Jets will put the ball into play now. As Joel Namath calling the signals, he's looked very good this afternoon. Boozer in motion to the right, the handoff to Snell. Matt just picks up about two yards and he crosses the line of scrimmage and is hit by the right side of the line. Jerry Mays, coming in from left side, makes the stop on Matt Snell. One of the Chiefs uh, looked like Curly Culp was shaken up a little bit, number 61, limping back to his position. He's the former NCAA wrestling champ, Jim. He's very agile, very quick, and uh, it's reflected uh, in his line play, and of course you can attribute that to his wrestling experience. Well, the New York Jets, the ball is on their 11, second down and nine yards to go, so a pickup of just one yard for Matt Snell. Two receivers wide to the left side for New York. Boozer in motion to the right side. Namath is looking left. Fires across the line. It is incomplete. He has been having trouble this afternoon with George Starr. He has not been close to George on any one of the three attempts that I can remember, Joe. They are playing Big Turner, who was on the same side uh, as George Starr. Very tight. Uh, of course, uh, he's got to be careful at this stage of the game here. Uh, uh, this is a very fine alert defense, Jim, and this would be a dangerous spot for anybody to pick it off. Third down and nine to go, and uh, he's got to come up with something uh, real good. Joe Namath, after going for four for four in his first attempt this afternoon, is now missed on his last four. Uh, so most inconsistent afternoon so far. Eight minutes and 55 seconds to go. In the first half, two wide receivers on the left side with Sauer the outside man, Big Turner's the inside man. Again, Boozer goes in motion to the right side. Namath is looking left. He is throwing left for Big Turner. He again overthrows and throws him to the outside again. And I think, Joe, every one of the uh, passes that have been incomplete have been exactly the same, going away from his back. Jim, incidentally, as he came up to the line of scrimmage that time, he kept his uh, hands kind of in his shirt, so maybe it's uh, that, that his hands are kind of frozen. It very well be. <laughs> I'm sitting inside a press box and mine is kind of frozen up here. Willie Mitchell, number 22, and Mike Garrett are the deep men now for Kansas City. So the Jets are kicking, forced to kick for the first time from deep within their own territory. O'Neill is back in the end zone. 
from the goal line. He lifts it high in the air. It's another good one, carrying down toward midfield. Oh, this one's dropping short in the wind. Drops down short in midfield, rolling to about the 43, 44-yard line. And it's still in Jet territory, and Kansas City gets a break on a bad kick into the wind. Jim, again, uh, the defense is playing a long time. The score, the New York Jets 3 and Kansas City 3. Now Samantha is on relaxing, dead hard. Well, if this turns out like most Jets games, you can make a pretty sure bet. The mighty tense moments are coming, so here's the suggestion. After the game, relax with a nice cool can of medicated almond powder. Now, before you blitz that idea, just listen. Almonds is not one of those sweet-smelling powders that's only for ladies. Almonds is medicated with active ingredients that can help a man's skin feel good, too. For example, if you find yourself sweating out a tense moment in the game, remember this. Almonds has cornstarch to help soak up the moisture. Medicated almond powder also contains a soothing skin lubricant. That's in case the game runs you the wrong way or gets you hot under the collar. And if a bad play gives your skin a crawly feeling, remember this. Almonds has germ fighters to combat skin bacteria. Medicated almond powder. Relax with a cool can of it right after the game. So here at Chase Stadium, the Kansas City Chiefs have picked up a break of sorts as Steve O'Neill, putting for the Jets from the end zone, got off a short one, and it landed on the Jets' 43-yard line. So Kansas City puts the ball in play first to Jen in Jets territory. From that point, the score ties 3-3, to three, and we have nine, 8 minutes and 39 seconds to play in the first half of the game. All right, Len Dawson brings him out of the huddle up to the ball. Again, here to tell you about it. The Jets 43, Kansas City first to 10. Here is Jim Gordon. The setback to Wendell Hayes and Mike Garrett. Hayes, number 38, comes to the right side now, just behind the end. Pitch out goes to Garrett. to cuts around the right side, and is hit immediately as he turns the corner on the right. Stock, uh, taken down by Cornell Gordon with a gain of perhaps three or four yards. Ralph Baker helped make the stop. Eight minutes and 20 seconds to go. Second down and six yards to go for Kansas City. Yes. Got to admit, Jim, he, he has a fine, diversified attack. His passing, his running, his draws, his screens, just just well executed. Really, that cold could very well be the fact that, Joe, as you point out, I see that Len Dawson has also missed his last five pass attempts. So perhaps to get him freeze a little bit. Looks like an offside as the play cuts across the middle for a pickup of about four yards, but there were flags all over the place, I think, on the Kansas City side. Right tackle, I think, was offside. Number 73, Jim Dave Hill, I believe he was offside. Seven minutes and 56 seconds to go in the first half in a 3-3 game. Jets court in the first quarter, Kansas City in the second. Ball has moved back again. Paul Crane goes out. He brings in that fifth defensive back, Jim. With second and six to go, he's anticipating that uh, he'll probably throw it to second and 11. Second 11 now because of the penalty. They just lost the five. It'll be on the 43-yard line. Second down with 11 yards to go. The eye formation breaks once again. Two setbacks either side of Len Dawson. Single receiver wide to the left side. Dawson turns around, takes the hat off to Hayes to Garrett, and a beautiful draw. Cracks across the middle, picks up about 10 yards, and is rammed back as he gets to the 35-yard line. Al Atkinson made the stop in the middle, and Garrett really got himself a fine jump and a wide open hole in the middle of the line. As we said, he's called a fine ball game. This is a well-coached team. You know, Stram insists, Jim, that he's rebuilding. He has only four starters from his 1967 Super Bowl team. He's a fine trader, a good drafter, and a good coach. He's short of the first down. It'll be third down with three yards to go for Kansas City. They're deep in Jet territory now. The ball on the 35-yard line. Wide receiver left and right side. Two set back to either side of Len Dawson. Dawson turns. And to Garrett trying to turn the corner left side. And he did not get to the line of scrimmage. Larry Grantham and Jerry Philbin combining. What happened, Jim, was that Grantham came in and uh, took the tackle out of the play. Then uh, Philbin came up and made the stop. Santa Rita will be trying this time. From about the 44-yard line, I think. We'll wait till you line up. Jerry Philbin has given official credit for making that stop. It's a loss of four yards. Ball will be down on the 44-yard line. The 44-yard line. It's a tough one. 
Center is one of the very, very best. He's kicking from the left side hash mark. The ball is spotted. It is in the air. Looks short. It is short and wide to the right. The score, the New York Jets 3 and Kansas City 3. Now here's a word from Valentine. To be crisp, a beer, the isolate night. Smooth and delicious, precisely right. Lively, golden, crystally clear. The crisp, refresher. Valentine, Valentine, beer. Hey, get your cold beer. Hey, get your Valentine. Hey, get your cold, cold beer. Get your ice cold Valentine beer. the three ring sign and ask the man for Valentine Premium Lager Beer. Here in New York, with six minutes and 23 seconds to go in the first half, we still have a tie ball game. As for the second time in a row, Jan Stederud has missed a field goal attempt, this time from 44 yards out. So it is Jet Ball at their own 20 yard line on the touchback. The ball fell into the end zone off to the right of the goal post. So Namath brings them up to the line of scrimmage. First and ten for the Jets of their own 20. Four side, three to three again, Jim Gorsuch. Two wide receivers left side, a single wide receiver out on the right side. Emerson Boozer goes in motion to his right side. Namath is looking to his left as he drops back to the ten. Now over to the right side, the ball is deflected. High in the air and incomplete. Namath was hit and gets up a little bit slowly at the 10-yard line. I was following the ball. I don't know who got to him, but they got to him. He gets up slowly. It is pointed out the Jets have picked up 10 yards in this exchange. Their last series of downs started at the 10 because of the unsuccessful field goal attempt. They are now started from their 20. Bobby Bell has been covering uh, Boozer on that man in motion towards the right side, Jim, and they may be uh, wanting to work on Boozer. Boozer may suddenly break down that sideline. We'll have to watch. Emerson Boozer goes out. Billy Mathis comes in with Matt Snell on the right side and Billy Mathis set on the left side. Wide receiver singly, left and right side. Name is off back for a handoff to Snell and a draw up to the 25-yard line. Still on his feet to about the 27, and he stops. Jim Lynch, number 51, makes the stop there. Snell, so far this afternoon, has been having a good day for himself, despite the fact they seem to have been set for him. He's been able to break through, Joe. I think the idea of putting him off is uh, probably a little heavier than that he's more of a blocker than Boozer is. Five minutes and 48 seconds to go. He has done, it has pointed out, the only running for New York this afternoon. A 3-3 game, Kansas City and the New York Jets. Namath falls the team down. Drops back now to the 20 and throws to the right side. Big Turner complete to Big Turner at the 35-yard line. And he's run out of bounds there. Jim Marcel is covering, and Big Turner in very heavy traffic with Marcellus Blue who made a fine catch. A little worried there that time, Jim, because all Marcellus had to do was to cut in front of Big Turner. If he had that kind of speed, he could have picked it off and gone about 30, 35 yards for the TD. That's a dangerous play out there into the flat. There is nobody else between him and the goal line but the passer who is away across on the other side of the field. Ball is on the 35. It is good, of course, for a first down. It's first and 10 to go from the New York Jets 35. Emerson Boozer is back in as a setback on the right side of Joe Namath. Snell is set to the left side. Single receivers wide, left and right. Pete Lammis is the tight end. Back to the 30. Looking to his left, it is incomplete to George Sauer, who is hit and knocked out of bounds as he drops the ball. Emmett Thomas, number 18, the coverage coming in from the right side, right quarterback. Namath has completed one of eight pa of his last eight passes, Jim. One of eight. Correction on the setback. Billy Mathis is still in. Boozer is still on the sideline. With Matt Snell, the second back. Ball on 35, second down, with still 10 yards to go for New York. Both Namath and Dawson, after excellent starts, are having trouble connecting with their receivers. And I think it just could be the cold. It is a really raw, cold day in New York, despite the sunshine. Name of the set. 
fakes the hat off. Now he gives to Mathis. Mathis tracks across the left side. Picks up perhaps two yards when he's stopped by Buck Buchanan, number 86. Who at 6'7 and 275 pounds is a stopper. He's got good speed for a big man. Jimmy moves very well. He has good anticipation. It is third and eight for New York. They are deep in their own territory. Trying to crack out with four minutes and 20 seconds to go as the clock continues to run. The ball is now across the 35. It is officially on the 37-yard line. Big Turner wide on the right side. George Towers playing inside him, also wide on the right side, with Lamas wide on the left. Now Billy Mathis goes in motion to the left side, leading Snell back there. Pass protection for Namath. He throws to his right side to Big Turner, and it is incomplete. He almost had it. He had did, trouble on the field. He did a great job, Jim. What he did is he ran at a normal speed downfield and then suddenly burst out on top and had his man beat, but the pass was not there. We pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Jets Radio Network. This is your New York Jet station in Amsterdam, New York, WCSF. It's, a, it's exactly 2.30. Garrett and Mitchell are the deep men. Mike Garrett on the right side looking downfield. Mitchell at the top looking down from the left side. O'Neill steps forward, kicks the ball from about the 27-yard line, coming down at the 30, about there to Garrett. Garrett tried to get away from one man, break the tackle, still on his feet, plus the 35-yard line, and it's finally down by a host of New York taxes. The score, the New York Jets 3, Kansas City Chiefs 3. Now, here's a word from Valentine. Well, what a game this is. The kind of game that really worked up a giant surge. And here's the best way to put that thirst on ice. With a frosty bottle or can of Valentine beer, the crisp refresher. If you've got a real thirst, you just want to relax, pick up a Valentine. A beer that has 130 years of brewing experience behind it. Crystally clear, smooth, and delicious. Aged just long enough to make it precisely right. The result, a beer full of purity, body, and flavor. A beer that really satisfies no matter how long you've been building up your thirst. Valentine beer. The next time, listen to the man singing, Hey, get your cold beer. Then make the free ring sign and ask the man for a Valentine. Valentine premium lager beer, the crisp refresher. Back to the action and Jim Gordon. On a fast opener, Mike Garrett tracks across the middle of the line. Stopped by Larry Grantham, and it might be enough for first down. It is first down for Kansas City. So the ball is now spotted on the 48-yard line of the Kansas City Chiefs in a 3-3 tie game with 2 minutes and 56 seconds remaining in the first half. After a championship playoff game, it is everything everybody talked about. Two evenly matched teams looking for what could be a break and perhaps the only one in the game. Right. Hand off to Wendell Hayes. Hayes up to the 50-yard line, and he is stopped there by Paul Trey, number 56. Jim, you can understand uh, the evenness of this game when you realize that the Jets have 10 men on the AFL All-East team and Kansas City has nine on the All-West team. That's an indication that they've got some real fine talent. There's no doubt that the best team that we have seen against the Jets this year, now there might be better someplace in the league, but the best one we had seen was the Kansas City team. And the Jets certainly show are showing much better against them this afternoon than the first time around. Yes. Kansas City set again now. Len Dawson has wide receivers left and right side. He is looking deep this time. He is going over the middle. It is incomplete at the 30-yard line. Randy Beverly fell down coming up for that one, Jim, or he could have made the interception. Again, I guess the field is just too hard. He's kind of slide on it more than he can step on it. Jerry Philbin has took a long time coming out of the Kansas City backfield, so he must have been paying a visit there to Len Dawson. <laughs> Dawson was hit just as he released the ball, Jim. Just two minutes to go in the first half. With the score, 3-3, Kansas City and New York. Fred Arvanis, number 84, comes out. Gloucester Richardson went in, Jim, and he played a real fine ball game against the Jets the last time they were here. Big man, big and strong. Oh, a real dust storm comes swirling across the field now. The field has been frozen all week long, and the players have churned up just a fine layer of dust on top. And a gust of wind just sent Kansas City players away from the field. Jim, while we have this opportunity, we might look ahead. We have a tie score here, 3-3. Three to three. We might remind our listeners that the league rules specify that should the game end at a tie, they will play 
Uh, Sutton death uh, fifth quarter, you might say. So the game will not end in a tie under any circumstance until the final outcome is known because should regulation time wind up in a tie, they'll go on and play a sudden death extra period. The way they're going, said we could be here all afternoon. I hope Half not. the night. <laughs> Ball is on the 49-yard line, third down, seven yards to go for Kansas City, and you keep getting the feeling that one big break to decide the game. Both teams in their initial tries this afternoon looked as good as anything we have seen. It has slowed down a little bit with the passers having trouble getting their passes to where they want them to. It could be the cold weather. Kansas City broke out of their huddle just a little bit prematurely. Apparently the full time hadn't been taken. They dropped back again. We have not seen Robert Holmes since he was popped coming across the middle of the line in the early in the second quarter or late in the first, so apparently he was injured on the play. Wendell Smith and the uh, Hayes rod in the backfield along with Mike Garrett in the setback. Wide receivers left and right side. Back goes Len Dawson looking over the middle. He is going deep and it's deflected. Knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Right hey. over the ball now. Johnny Elliott really cracks the cross to bring it down. And the New York Jets hold at perhaps the most important point of the entire ball game to date. Jim, for weeks and weeks, these teams drill a, a two-minute drill to have, keep control of that ball. That was a fine effort by Elliott, as you pointed out. He keeps his hands up, Jim, and I like to see that on the line when he expects somebody to throw and it works. They cannot make use of Jan Senaru. The ball is simply too far out, so that was a big play with 155 to go in the first half. They've got the punch. The ball is kicked from the 40-yard line. It's a beauty, carrying deep downfield. Inside the 10, the Jets are going to let it go. It bounces out of the end zone. So they'll start from the 20. It was a good rush on him, too, Jim. They were playing nine men on the line of scrimmage, and he got his kick away very quickly and very well. He went 50 yards before she came down. And the Jets never made a move for it. There was no doubt in their minds, with 147 now remaining on the clock, they wanted that ball for sure as far up as they could get it. 3-3 three, three is the score. The Jets drew first blood in the first quarter, Kansas City in the second. The Jets send two men wide to the left side, George Sauer. I beg your pardon, now they have singled up again. Sauer wide to the left, take Turner's wide to the right. Davis drops back, hands off now to Mathis. Mathis across the 20, gets for half the yard, and that's as far as he's going to go. Buck Buchanan plugs the hole. I believe there was a change at the line of scrimmage that time because Sauer got up from his position, moved over a little closer so that he might hear the automatic. One minute and 31 seconds remaining in the first half in a beautiful football game. Officially, it is a two-yard pickup for Billy Mathis. Toward the left side, so it'll be second down with eight yards to go. The ball is on the New York 22. Wide receivers left and right side, it's Big Turner on the right. Two setbacks, Mathis on the left side, and Matt Snell on the right. Name is hands to Snell across the center now, picks up about two to three more, and it stops just shy of the 25-yard line. Jim, the booing may be a little unfair, as uh, Dick Lynch points out, uh, with a, a minute uh, left to play in the game, the Kansas City has six defensive backs in there, which means that they've got every, just about everybody who can come out for a pass covered, so Namath is hoping that somebody might break away on a running play. Clock is finally stopped now with 44 seconds showing on it, Joe. And that could be the most important factor right now. The score of the Jets 3 in Kansas City. Three more Jets football after this message from Score. Score presents the four Jets. I'm Big Turner, and we're the four Jets. Mr. Jim Turner. Bah. Country Don Maynard. Bah. Brother Matt Snell. Bah. Wow. Hey man, I don't stick my hair with any messy grease and slick on that don't ride. Don't ride, don't ride. Ba 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 the only one for me Mix it with a little water And your hair holds like it ought to Oh, baby, that's the score That's the score, that's the score Buck 
the coach says, score if you're going to play. Has just moved across the 30-yard line, stopped by Bobby Bell and Jerry Mays, and it might be enough for a first down with 32 seconds remaining. It is pretty close, close to it. See if they're going to measure or not. Official time, they are going to measure this one. It is very, very close. Very, very close, and it is a first down. First down, New York. So the ball will be about on the 30-yard line in New York territory with 32 seconds remaining in the first half. As Joe Hassel pointed out to you, they have got everybody and his brother playing deep for Kansas City to protect against the pass, the expected pass by Joe Namath. So far, he's been staying on the ground with the possibility of breaking somebody loose, the long, long gainer on the ground. Mathis, incidentally, almost was that man. He ran out of space on the right sideline. Sauer wide left, Turner wide right side. Mathis and Snell the setback. Says Joe Namath looks to the right side. Now checks his left. Dean comes set. And Namath turns around for a hand off to Snell. He gets an interference block by Mathis. Gets across midfield to the 45-yard line, almost to the midfield mark. He is stopped short of the 50th line, runs out. And so, at the end of the first half, the score, the New York Jets 3, the Kansas City Chiefs 3. Okay, Jim Gordon, and that's it as the teams leave the field for the halftime intermission with the score, as Jim has just mentioned, Kansas City 3 and the Jets 3. Right now, this message from Valentine. Hey, get your cold beer. Hey, get your Valentine. Hey. Valentine Premium Lager Beer. Stay tuned for our halftime show, which will be coming up shortly. We'll have more Jets football in just 60 seconds. Is it any wonder that Sam Pep's Restaurant is one of the most popular dining places in town? Centrally located at 218 West Main Street in Amsterdam, there are just enough people just the nicest people to serve you delicious, real, home-style Italian food and American dishes just as tempting. Sam Pep has built a reputation for lavish hospitality, superb food, and genuine, friendly service. And Pep's restaurant is a top spot for family dining, with immediate serving and piping hot food. They enjoy catering to people who like to eat, people who enjoy good food and plenty of it. Dinner at Sam Pep's restaurant is meant to be enjoyed completely. Stop in soon for cocktails and a delightful dining experience. That's at Sam Pep's restaurant, open daily from 5 p.m. and 12 noon Sundays. They're closed on Mondays at 218 West Main Street, Amsterdam. At Shea Stadium in New York, along with Joe Hassel and Jim Gordon, this is Ted Hodge speaking to you at halftime in the American Football League playoff game between the New York Jets and the Kansas City Chiefs. The playoff game, of course, matches the very best, and the score indicates that's what we're seeing here today. Three to three. The only scoring of the ball game in the first quarter, Jim Turner kicked a 27-yard field goal for the New York Jets, in the second quarter, Jan Stellerud kicked a 23-yard field goal for the Kansas City Chiefs, and that's been it in this ball game. And again, we want to remind our listeners that in the event that this game should end in a tie, 
there will be a sudden death playoff period and uh, there will be a two minute inter intermission actually at the end of the game there will be about a two minute intermission according to the schedule set up by the league and after the two minute intermission there will be a, a sudden death period it is scheduled for four minutes and if it's still tied, then they'll go on from there. Whichever team scores first in this overtime period will be the winner of the game. The game will end right there, and that'll be it. So, in case the score stands where it is now 3-3, three to three, or in case uh, it winds up in a tie with some other score, that's what will happen. We'll have an extra period, and uh, so that uh, in any eventuality, the game, uh, when it is finally over, will not, under any circumstances, end in a tie. This is a cold and crisp but clear day at Shea Stadium. The temperature now is down in the 20s, about uh, 28 degrees, we've just been advised. There's a cold, cold wind down on the field and blowing into the stands and into the fourth floor where the press, radio, and television facilities are located here. 13 to 32 mile an hour gusts as the wind blows. And there's been snow here in New York, and it's piled up on the sidelines down below us and across the field. You see plenty of the white stuff. Right now, the more than 62,000 fans who turned off of this game are being entertained by the Jet Set uh, marching and drill team. And right now, they're going to be entertained by the Westchester, Pennsylvania State College Band. This has been a We're ready for the second half kickoff in this tie game. The score, Kansas City 3 and New York 3. And the ball has been placed on the 40-yard line of Kansas City. Jan Stender will kicking off to the Jets. He comes forward, boots the ball, it's in the air, and here is Jim Gordon. Mike Battle's going to run it back to the 5, to the 10. He's up to the 15. He's trying to cross the 20, throw the feet to the 25, and really wobble it around the knees as he gets to the 25-yard line. He's up and all right. So battle with a net gain of some five yards past that automatic 20-yard line, as far as he's concerned. He sets his eyes actually on the 30, figuring anything after that is pure gravy. I've heard of football chatter shows and never thought they were talking about feces over there. <laughs> <laughs> this is a cold one. 3-3 three, three the score. The Jets putting the ball. In the motion now. Had off in the backfield, the Boozer trying to sweep the left side. He gets across the line of scrimmage and picks up about five to seven yards before he is down just short of the 30-yard line. Boozer couldn't quite make the turn around the corner. He came close. Bearing in mind, Jim, that if they get close to the Kansas City goal, they will be in the protected side of the stadium uh, if they're thinking of any field goal kicking. Most field goals, as Joe Hassel points out, have come from the same end of the field. At the open end of Shea Stadium, the top of the horseshoe, gusty wind, and a little bit tough. Two wide receivers to the right side to the New York Jets. Sowers, the inside man. Namath is looking to his right. They can't get free. They got Namath. They get to Namath back behind the line of scrimmage. He is trapped there and down. Incidentally, Boozer was one of the uh, men going out for the pass, Jim, as we had anticipated in the first half. He may be utilized in that position. Left hand, Jerry Mays, number 75, always a tough man to handle. Came tracking across the down, Joe Namath from behind. So it's a loss of six and a big play. Both Len Dawson and Joe Namath started off very, very well in the passing department this afternoon, and it was like somebody turned a switch. All of a sudden, neither one could do anything right. They have not been intercepted, but neither have they been able to find their targets. The handoff to Snell on a draw, he cracked across the left side of the line and picked up about four more at a sudden spurt, getting up almost to the 30-yard line where they just were before, before they lost the ball, or before the, well, the name was dropped for a six-yard loss. Jim, as you remember, Namath completed four out of four, the first four. Then he went six without a completion. Then he completed one and missed again. That was the first half. Len Dawson, too, went for about 5-5 five five in the first half, the first uh, time he threw, and after that, suddenly couldn't find his man. Of course, the coverage has been very, very tight, as expected in a game like this. For the first time today, I believe, Steve O'Neill has his back into the win now as he punched the ball. He's had a couple of dummies. 
Lifts this one high and coming down around the 30-yard line in Kansas City territory. Takes a big bounce short of the 30. Bounces back upfield toward the 40-yard line and across that and finally rolls out of bounds. We'll pause here 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Jets Radio Network. This is your New York Jet Station in Amsterdam, New York, WCSS. One minute past three o'clock. Here in New York, the second half of the game between the Kansas City Chiefs and New York Jets is just getting underway. The uh, Jets put the ball in play for a series of three dots, put the bench for a first down until Steve O'Neill has just booted it out up to the Kansas City 46-yard line. The Chiefs will be putting the ball in play from there. The Chiefs uh, uh, Jim Gordon has had pretty good field position on a number of these punts this afternoon. They have indeed. They are The Jets, however, have not been getting the kind of distance that they expect out of O'Neill today. I don't know what it is, whether he's having trouble with the pole himself, perhaps the muscles aren't stretched far enough, but he's not been getting the kind of distance they expect of him. He's a fine punter, one of the best in the league. And as a matter of fact, he's been following these Jet broadcasts. He's set a league record this year. Three free ball game. New York Jets and the Kansas City Chiefs at Chase Stadium in New York with the temperature we are judged now down below the freezing mark. And gusty winds. It is a clear day, though. Jim, in the first half, the Jets have seven first downs to nine for Kansas City. Namath's completed five. Jim, in the first half, the Jets have seven first downs to nine for Kansas City. Namath's completed five of 13. Dawson, seven of 15. They have Warren McVay as a running back now for Kansas City. He is split off and set to the left side of Len Dawson. The fakes now gives to McVay, who tries to center the line. He's clobbered there. Brought down by Al Atkinson in the center, who was watching all the way on the draw. He's a very fine running back, Jim. Uh, they call him uh, Bullock because he shaves his head and he runs the 40 and 4-2. And uh, we were waiting for him to get in there, but he got in there for just one play, and uh, this one didn't go. Jim Tyler and Verlin Biggs were throwing some knuckles around in there very quickly. They were separated, no damage done. It is that kind of a game. And it will get to be more and more so as time goes on. A 3 3 tie game. Frank Pitts is wide to the left side. Got Otis Taylor working inside him. Two men wide on the left end. Dawson is looking that way. He's being rushed now. They got him and drag him down at the 25, 35 yard line. Al Atkinson. Got to Len Dawson, and they take him down inside the 35. Jim, once again, it was Vernon Biggs. With, this is, is a tremendously strong man. Carried his man in, pushed him off, which opened up an alley for Atkinson to come through and just kind of beat Vernon to the tackle. It was a fine defensive play. This is one of the things, of course, the Jets were hoping to do, hoping to do early in the game, and that is get across to Len Dawson. Not give this man time to set. He doesn't need much time. He's one of the great all-time passers in the game. But if you make him rush just the least little bit, especially on a cold day, it's going to make a big difference in the football game. Two setbacks on either side of Len Dawson. Two wide receivers on the right side now. Dawson is back. He's getting rushed by Elliott. He throws to his right side. It is incomplete. Out of bounds. I tell you, Elliott was in there. Couldn't be in there much quicker. Wendell Hayes just gave him a little bit of, a, uh, just a slight body block, Jim, which threw him off stride. Otherwise, he'd have had to off. He was on his off foot, Joe. There's no doubt about it. You say it was a brush block, but he had that foot in the air, and so it was sprung for about five yards. Tremendous rush by New York. And I think these last two times, it is the biggest rush we've seen New York put on all year long. So it is fourth with 22 to go, and they're going to have to punt from about the... 25-yard line. They're on 25, of course. High pass from center, almost got away. Lifted in the air, and it's floating just around the 50-yard line. Drops down to 45, bounces to the 40, and they're going to down up there at the 40-yard line. With the score, the Jets 3 and the Chiefs 3, there's time out on the field. More Jets football in just 60 seconds. Oh, look, Ted. 
the Kellys in the parade with their new car. Yeah, Mavis, I see. What is it? Sure looks expensive. One of those big, fancy European cars, I'll bet. Mavis, that's an American Motors Ambassador SST. No more expensive than a lot of Fords or Chevys. If I know Mary Ann Kelly, I'll bet they chinced on the extras to get a car that looks like that. That ambassador has air conditioning, individually adjustable reclining seats. How do and... you know so much about the Kelly's ambassador? Well, air conditioning is standard equipment, not an option at all new ambassadors. Ted, you know we really could use a new car. Could we Mavis? Go... I've already ordered our new ambassador. <laughs> Wait till I see Mary Ann Kelly. See Prime American Motors having the most exciting auto show in Fort Plain. Whatever you want in a car, they have it ready for immediate delivery. Prime American Motors in Fort Plain. The New York Jets put the ball in play now from uh, their own 41-yard line. It'll be first and 10 from that point. A tie game, 3-3. 11-12 to go in the third quarter. Again, here is Jim Gordon. Kansas City's got double coverage on both wide receivers. As Namath looks for his right side to Big Turner, who it is incomplete. Big had trouble getting away. He's falling for pass interference. He was tripped on about the 45. He maintains, Jim. He did stumble. The official was right on top of it, and Blake Turner complained to him, but uh, there was no call. Turner was angling toward the right side and suddenly cut back in, veered toward center, and just didn't get there in time. So it's just a long incompletion. The score is tied 3-3. 11 minutes and 7 seconds to go in the third period. Kansas City Chiefs and the New York Jets. Wide receivers left and right. Name with his back. He's looking to his left side. Throws over the middle instead. It is intercepted. It is at the 45-yard line. And down there. Evan Thomas picks it out of the air. It is the first interception of the afternoon. Everybody in the press box is saying the same thing. This is the kind of a game that is decided by a break. There is the first interception of the afternoon. It gives the Kansas City Chiefs the ball on their own 46-yard line. First and ten to go. I would say that so far, Garrett is the rushing hero of the game. He picked up 45 yards on nine attempts. Smell has picked up 41 on seven. Garrett is in as one of the setbacks now. Pitch out goes to Garrett. He's getting interference to the right side. Turns the corner, gets up to the 50, across the 50, angles to the sidelines, and is flung out of bounds there. Right across the New York Jets bench, as a matter of fact. Cornell Gordon got to him, had him by an arm. So it'll be a second down for the Kansas City Chiefs as they and the Jets decide 3-3. Three three. Kansas City trying to get across the 50-yard line. They've cracked across it by about two yards now. Ball on the New York Jets, 48. Second and four to go on the run by Garrett. Randy Beverly is the cornerback on the right side for New York. Cornell Gordon on the left. Jimmy Richards is one of the safeties. Along with Billy Baird. Now the Jets have pulled Baird out. They're working with an extra linebacker. Hand off again to Garrett. Garrett across the middle of the 45-yard line. Down to the 40-yard line. And Garrett is hit there. And drops to the turf as he crosses the 40-yard line. Cornell Gordon puts the stop to us. Well, as you can see, Dawson, again, is using the running game to set up his throwing game, Jim. He's in the end of the field where uh, that wind which flows between the scoreboard and the stadium uh, could affect the accuracy of his throwing. But, uh, as you know, uh, we are into the third quarter, and they will have every advantage in the fourth and final quarter. Paul Crane is in as the extra linebacker for New York. You understand that Bobby Hall is down with an attack of intestinal flu. In the backfield now, Trapley crack across the middle across the 40-yard line, and that's about as far as they're going to get. As it just stopped in there, Al Atkinson plugging the hole in the middle. Ball is still just about on the 40. See as they unfile, just across the 40-yard line, about on the 41. Incidentally, Hayes and Garrett, Hayes who carried that time, seem to be the workhorses for the Chiefs. Hayes has caught three passes for 40 yards in the first half, and uh, he's run six times for 23 in the first half, so Jim, he's been busy along with Garrett. 
once again, that I formation breaks up. Garrett sets to the right side, Wendell Hayes to the left. Len Dawson turns around, hands off, takes the hand off, he's being chased, he throws to the line of scrimmage, complete to Hayes, is down at the 40. Hayes has a release man, takes it at the 40 and is hit from behind by Paul Train, the extra linebacker in there for the New York Jets. And they again tested Jerry Sylvan's side of the line and it just didn't work. Sylvan, incidentally, Joe, we can't say too much about, he's working with that brace around his left shoulder. Well, it's easy to see why he was picked on the All-Stars too, Jim. Great competitor. Ball is still in the 40. It is third and 10 to go still for Kansas City. They are again within ordinary field goal range, even though it takes a good kick to make it many places around that mark. But again, the winds are a very tricky in Chase Stadium, and they'd like to be able to pick up more distance for Jan Senarud. Dawson is back. He's still got the ball to the 50. He is looking deep downfield and throws to Taylor Incomplete. Otis Taylor with fine coverage by Billy Baird. Baird was almost inside Taylor's jersey that time. Eight minutes and 20 seconds to go. Third quarter of a fine football game that is tied 3-3. And Senator Ruth's going to come on to try a toughie. going to be one of the toughest attempts that Santa Root has ever made. It's going to come from about the 48-yard line with a tough crosswind. It's a gusty wind here at Chase Stadium. 47-yard line. It'll be a real tough try. It's a 3-3 game. It is down. The ball is up in the air. Low, and it is wide to the left side. No good. No good. The score, the Jets 3, the Chiefs 3. More Jets football after this word for mobile. Hello, sir. What can we do for you today? Uh, I'd like to have this clean pie. Wait a minute. That's an automobile engine. Uh, very good. Do you guarantee against shrinkage? Mister, this is the dry cleaners. We can't clean your engine. Uh, I know it's pretty dirty, but I think if you use some spot remover, you can get those grease stains out. Oh, I'd like, uh, I'd like, it, I'd like it on a hanger, if you don't mind. Sure. It's not so dumb wanting to clean your engine. After all, a cleaner engine can get more power and better mileage. But there is an easier way. Mobile detergent gasoline. Whether you use premium or regular, both blends of mobile help clean the inside of your engine for you. All you do is drive your car. So if you want to help make your car run better, don't go to a dry cleaner. Just go to a mobile dealer. We clean up what most gasolines make dirty. Here in New York for the third time this afternoon, Jan Stelleru, the fine the place kicker for Kansas City, has missed a field goal attempt. He's made one out of four. Now the Jets put the ball in play from their own 21st and 10. Score tied three to three against Jim Gordon. Namath has the ball in a rush. He throws complete to Lyman across the middle. Pete Lyman's at the 35-yard line on that short cross pattern. Willie Neer down the minute track. It's the first down New York. Fourteen-yard pass play for New York. The Jets approaching the midfield mark now. Boozer and Snell are set. Big center to the right side, start to left the draw play to Snell, and on the option now he goes through a tackle and picks up across the 40-yard line before he stops at the 42. This is the odd Jim, to, to, to keep the pressure on, to keep missing up the play, to catch them going in the wrong direction. Namath has now done it uh, for uh, these two, uh, two sequences, and uh, he can just uh, keep upsetting them. Uh, he, he can move his team. He's got about seven minutes to bring him down to this end of the field. The best end of the field. Ball is on the left side hash mark as the Jets go into action once again. Two step back to either side of Joe Namath. They turn a well out on the right side. The handoff in the backfield and they try the middle of the line. Pick up perhaps two. Tracking across and putting the ball down on the 45. Willie Lanier again stops it. They were playing almost a seven-man line defensively that time, Jim. I would imagine they anticipated it. If you just tuned in, you missed some football. It's the first down. Just enough for the first down. It is a 3-3 football game. The Jets with a field goal in the first quarter. Kansas City catching up in the second. Both teams have 
really been in trouble ever since that time, not really getting within good field goal range with cold, gusty winds at Shea Stadium. Sauer is the inside man and the double wide receiver right side. Fake Turner is the outside man. Namath is looking to his right. He's got an open man. It is complete to Sauer. He's run out of bounds. That's the 45-yard line. Fine pattern, Jim. Fake Turner was the short man, one inside. Sauer came over from the other side, went to the outside, and made the catch. I think what they were trying to do is to kind of uh, con confuse the defenders and uh, whatever it was, it worked for at least a game. He was looking for the first down on that out pattern and he didn't quite make it apparently, just a little bit short. Gain of nine yards on a first and ten situation. Second and one to go in New York. Once again, the wide receivers are split either end. Line play and it might be enough for first down at the keeper, I name it. Let's see where he makes. Name is on a keeper. Looking for the first down, first down. That's a big line to move out of there, Jim. They're playing seven men, playing what is an old, virtually a 7-2-2. Jets three and Chiefs three. The Jets are now within Kansas City territory on a first and ten situation. The ball is spotted on the 45. Turner right, star left, name is back, looking, still looking, goes to the right side and deep, meant for Turner it is, intercepted at the 40, 10 yard line, he turns to the 15, up to the 20, across the 20 to the 25 to the 30, across the 30 to the 35 to the 40, and down before he gets to the 45 yard line. Marcellus is the intercepted, Jim Marcellus, on a pattern in which Big Turner was not the turn to look until the ball got to him and he waited a split second too long. That's right. Marcellus just moved in under him, Jim, and they, their hands must have clashed in the air as they, as they reached for the ball. So a big jet drive is stalled and Kansas City takes over. With Marcellus returning it from inside the 10-yard line almost to the 45. The ball is down officially on the 44, first and 10 to go, Kansas City. Holmes is back in the ball game again, number 45, is one of the running backs. The handoff is to Garrett. Garrett is hit, slowed down, gets across scrimmage, and then is downed after a gain of about a yard and a half. Whole center of the New York jet line collapsed on him. Incidentally, you notice, Jim, that Dawson is staying away from the traffic. He's going very deep on these hands off. After he hands the ball away, he keeps retreating another five yards. He's not going to be hit. This is about as tough as we've seen the New York Jets rush this year. They are not known as a blitzing team, but they've been putting more pressure on here in the third quarter than in the entire game or the entire season. Ball is on the 45, second and nine to go. Setback now, no eye formation. Dawson is back, he's getting past protection and a rush on him. He's going deep. Rhoda Taylor, incomplete. He overthrew his hand. Nobody within 10 yards of him, Jim. Nobody within 10 yards of him. Taylor went down on the far side, cut to the inside. There was a mix-up in the coverage, and he was at midfield as regards the sidelines, down around the 15. All he had to do was catch it. It was overthrown. And aren't we glad? <laughs> it was tough. Taylor is the man that ripped the Jets apart in their only previous meeting here at Shea Stadium. He apparently is a... Very, very sneaky ball player in the line. He gets good moves and springs loose. Jim Richards came in. Paul Cray went out. We've got five defensive backs in there, Jim. Third and nine coming up. Time to get into the gun. Quite important here. We only have 4.48 to go in the third period. In a 3-3 game, and it will be sudden death, as Ted Hodge pointed out before. If it ends in a tie. Dawson's got the eye now with two men behind him. Holmes and Garrett, the running back, the fake hand off. He's dropping back. He's getting a rush. He throws across the middle. Incoming. And Dawson is really clobbered at the 30-yard line, driven back about five yards. Sylvan, Biggs, and Thompson were in on him, and he was hit that time. He was hit heavily. Dawson is shook as the punter comes in now for Kansas City with the Jets putting on the pressure. Mike Battle is deep. Billy Baird will be stationed about the 30-yard line. The 
Jets will be coming in hard on this one. They're trying to crack. The punch is up, and it's a beauty. It's a low one. Could be a penalty as the kicker is in. A loose ball picked up by Battle. Battle to the 20-yard line is down there, and it could be a roughing the kicker penalty coming up. Paul Crane came in to block it, and he hit the man. All he's got to do is just hit him, uh, and it's a 15-yard penalty. It'll be a first down for uh, Kansas City. So oh, there's one of those big breaks that you're talking about, Joe. They can go either way, and this one certainly against the New York Jets. The ball is up to the 50-yard line on a roughing the kicker penalty. So Kansas City gets a big break. Dawson comes right back in again. He's got the ball exactly in midfield. It is centered between the hash marks at the 50-yard line. As Wilson came over to the sideline, everybody on the bench got up and congratulated him, Jim, because of the fine kick and the fact that he was rough. He got off a beauty when all the way yes, down to the 10-yard line. Dawson's got two setbacks. He's got two men wide on his right side now. The team comes set. Gets very quiet in Shea Stadium. Dawson drops back, throws to his right side, deflected and almost intercepted. Earl and knows. Paul Crane. Paul Crane, who was just hit with that penalty, almost had the ball, and he would have been off and gone. Yes, sir, Jim. Again, that fine effort of going into the air, reaching up there, trying to block it, which a lot of linemen don't do, a lot of linebackers don't do, but he did it and uh, just missed hanging on to the ball. It's pretty tough to do in this cold weather. Well, the ball stays on the 50, second down and 10 yards to go. Four minutes and 29 seconds remaining. In the third quarter of a tie, 3-3 game. Wide receivers left and right side. Dawson over the middle, completes one to the 40-yard line. Still in the to the 35, to the 30. Still in the seat, Arbanis down to the 25, and down short of the 20-yard line. Fred Arbanis with a fine, twisting run, breaking at least three tackles, and finally stopped by Paul Crane. Again, that quick look and type of pass, Jim, whereby... Uh... Dawson gets the ball and unloads it almost immediately. Arbanis is in the backfield, moving towards the center and makes the catch. He's a tough man to bring down. He's about 250, and he, he's not fast, but he has mobility. This is probably the biggest threat that Kansas City has had since they scored in the second quarter. They have the ball in the Jet 24, certainly within range now. The talented toe, John Center, who's the hand off to Garrett, who's fluttered as he tries to cross the 25-yard line. He is stopped by Johnny Elliott. Elliott stops Mike Garrett, a fine runner. Again, not a big man, 5'9", but 190 pounds of solid strength. Foster Richardson, number 30, comes in. Fred Arbanis goes out. Arbanis, the man who just picked up that key and critical game for the Kansas City Chiefs. Time running, three minutes and 17 seconds to go. Third quarter, 3-3, New York and Kansas City. They send out Otis Taylor wide to the right side now. Dawson is back. Everybody's going deep. Everybody. A long throw for Richardson is incomplete in the end zone. He dropped it. He had two men beat down there. He was in the end zone. He tried to make an over-the-shoulder catch, Jim, and couldn't hang on to the ball. He did reach the ball. They had everybody going deep that time. 3-3, three, three, the score remains. Third and 11, with the ball on the 25. Otis Taylor, Foster Richardson, and Frank Fitz, all fine speed merchants, all good pass catchers, working now with Len Dawson. Ball on the 25, third with 11 to go. Kansas City taking plenty of time. Otis Taylor's back in at the right side with Foster Richardson working inside him with two men wide on the right. Dawson drops back, drops back, throws to his release man to Hayes, short of the 20, he breaks one tackle, gets across the 20, has ridden out of bounds before he gets to the 15. John Elliott. Well, center road gets another chance, Jimmy. Coming on now, they will try a field goal. Two minutes and 35 seconds to go, Joe, in the third period. And Senarud in good form here, good shape. 
ball will be kicked by the left side hash mark. It'll be about 26 yards is right, about 26. Certainly within range, he's a fine kicker. The ball is spotted down. It is up in the air, and it is good, and Kansas City leads. The score, Kansas City Chiefs 6, the New York Jets 3. Now, here's a word from Valentine. Say, if you've ever played football, you know how fast you can work up a great big thirst. And you know what satisfies the thirst best? The great taste of a Valentine beer, the crisp refresher. Nothing tastes like it. Icily light, smooth, and delicious. Why, it's almost worth getting thirsty just to get your hands on one. And you know why Valentine tastes the way it does? Well, part of it is the way it's brewed. Crystally clear, smooth, and delicious. And then age to make it precisely right. The other part is experience over 130 years. So the next time you build yourself a great thirst, get yourself a great beer. Step up and ask the man for a Valentine premium lager, the crisp refresher. Nothing tastes better than an ice-cold Valentine beer. So here at New York, the Kansas City Chiefs on the kicking toe of Jan Stenderud have gone ahead of the New York Jets for the first time. They lead now 6-3. to three. Over the Jets with 2 minutes and 12 seconds to go in the third period of this playoff game in the American Football League. Now Stenderud has placed the ball on the 40-yard line. The deep men for the Jets again are Mike Battle and George Knox. Stenderud comes forward. He boots the ball. It's a low one, and here is Jim Gordon. Takes it out to the 20. Strikes out of bounds. There's a flag, and she goes out. It'll cost a five. Kick has got to stay in. It did not. It is Kansas City 6 and the New York Jets 3. With two minutes and eight seconds remaining in the third quarter. So Stenderud will have to kick this one from the 35 now. Obviously, try to keep it low. They are very tough to handle. Angling for the corner, but it took a big left ang uh, right angle bounce going out of the left sideline as you look upfield from a Kansas City standpoint. Two minutes and eight seconds to go. Six to three, the score in the third period. Kansas City with the New York Jets. Center route the kicker. Puts it in the air, another low one, sailing down to the 10-yard line where Battle will field it, and he'll try to run it to the 15 to the 20, 25, across the 25 to the 30, gets across the 30-yard line just about, and is stopped there. Of course, Jim, as Dick Lynch has pointed out, those the bouncing kickoffs uh, uh, could be intentional with the idea that they're tough to field. Uh, they uh, pin you down, they hold you there a little bit to, to bring it back. Gives the uh, kicking team time to get down a little bit better. Crowd comes alive. John Maynard is in his wide receiver on the right side. For the first time this afternoon, he'll be testing out that broken foot. Hand off in the backfield. Billy Mapp is up the line of scrimmage. Gets rid of one tackler. Can't shake the other one, though, and is down just about on the line. Curly Colton up to 60 watts. Might look for something on a crisscross pattern, Jim. I noticed that the main had went down on the right side and then cut over. Sauer came down on the left and cut inside. And they may be trying to do to the Chiefs what the Chiefs were doing to them, uh, to, to get the secondary a little confused on their assignment. Wide receivers go wide, left and right side with Sauer left, Maynard right. Two setbacks on either side of Namath, who is looking to throw the ball. Over the middle it is, complete to Sauer at the 50-yard line. Down at the 49. Emmett Thomas, the only man between him and the goal, had wrestled him down. It'll be interesting, Joe, to see how much of a psychological effect Don Maynard has. Got 40 seconds left in this quarter, and this is the side of the field to try to do it on, Jim. It'll be a little tougher going the other way. The clock is running as Maynard looks to Maynard on the right side. His relief man is Snell, who didn't turn his time. And he's angry with himself. He was looking downfield. The ball was drilled at him. As he turned around, it was already in his body. Maynard was hit. It is a flower down. It may be roughly a flag down, roughing the passes, Jim.
Joe is a little upset because Namath didn't turn around. He's talking to him now, but uh, Namath is uh, just as well satisfied. He got 15 yards. 6-3 the score, Kansas City, but the Jets on that penalty for roughing the passer have a first and 10 to go on the 35-yard line of the Chiefs. Namath is back. He's looking to his right side. He throws complete to Snell. Same play, this time complete. Snell moves down almost to the 25-yard line when he's stopped by Jim Carney. Jim, we're getting down to that 20-yard line, and as you know, all season long, the Jets have had trouble scoring from inside the 20. Joe Namath is moving toward the far sideline. We'll watch him as he goes. He may be going over to talk it over with the coach. Of course, the that's the end of the uh, third quarter. The score, Kansas City 6, the Jets 3. More Jets football after this message from Score. Score presents the four Jets. I'm Big Turner, and we're the four Jets. Mr. Jim Turner. Bah. Country Don Maynard. Bah. Brother Matt Snell. Bah. Wow. Hey man, I don't dig my hair with any messy grease and slick on that don't ride. Don't ride, don't ride. Well, I used to play the grease bowl, but I was just a kid too dumb to see. With a little water and your hair holds like it ought to. Oh, baby, that's the score. That's the score. That's the score. Like the coach says, score if you're going to play. Here in New York, we move into the fourth quarter of play. Kansas City leading the New York Jets by a score of 6 to 3, but the Jets have the ball on the Kansas 26. Their best to trust. Off the second half, they have a second down and a yard to go. Again, Jim Gordon. Don Maynard in the game. His wide receiver right side, George Sauer on the left. Two setbacks. As much of the crowd gets to its feet to watch the action. Namath turns, hands off to Billy Mathis, who tries the center of the line, looking for that big yard. He will be close. That's his way to the unpile. Buck Buchanan made the stop. We'll pause here 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Jets Radio Network. This is your New York Jet Station in Amsterdam, New York, WCSS. It is a first down New York. Six to three, Kansas City. The ball on the 25-yard line of the Kansas City Chiefs. 14 minutes and 27 seconds remaining in the football game. Two wide receivers left side. Maynard is the inside man. Sauer is on the outside. Joe Willie Namath turns around, takes the hand off to Mathis, getting protection, throws deep to the left side, and is going to go out of bounds. Meant for Matt Snell, who came across as a pass receiver and couldn't get to the ball. Sauer had his man beat going deep, Jim. He was in the end zone and was in there uh, having about oh, three or four yards on, on the nearest defender. Uh, you know that he's going to come back and tell Joe that he had his man beat, and maybe we'll see some activity in that area. Interesting pattern of that with Snell, but again, Namath's had trouble with the left side sideline all afternoon. He has not been able to gauge it. You can only guess it's a cold weather. On almost every play to the left side, he's thrown the ball out of bounds by about five yards. Over his bat. Single wide receiver left and right side. Now it's Pete Lamont to tight end working on the right side. Mathis on the left as they're running back along with Snell on the right as running back behind Joe Namath. Namath calls the team set now. Drops back. He's got protection. He is looking to throw deep into the end zone for Sauer. It is in a flag of the play. Looks like a penalty. It's a penalty in the end zone. As Sauer reaches for it. Puts it on the one-yard line. A penalty in the end zone will put it on the one-yard line. And Joe, you couldn't have called it better. Sauer indeed obviously came back and said he had his man beat. And he had him beat again, which is why Thomas fouled him. That is the break of the football game. 
Today's attendance is, I believe, the new AFL record, 62,977, Jim. Don Maynard has just gone out. They got Wayne Stewart, the big tight end in now, as a receiver. The Jets looking for one yard. Play on the right side to Matt Snell, and Snell is stopped just short of the goal line, unless he's underneath that place. On this cold, cold afternoon in New York, 62,977 people in Shea Stadium. I would say a foot, Jim. Ball on the one-foot line. Second down, that one foot to go for New York to take the lead in a 6-3 game with Kansas City currently on top. Name it to Mathis. Mathis is... Stop short. Mathis doesn't make it. He was stopped in midair. He tried to go over the top and couldn't make it. And they'll have to try it again. We had one like this earlier this year, which Namath crossed everybody up and kept the ball, went in by himself. They're able to wedge the middle out. But it's a dangerous play. Third and still that one foot to go. The team comes set. Namath, face, he's going to throw. He's running out to his right side. Nobody is loose. Still no receiver. Still no receiver. He is hit and really hit on the outside. The ball went down incomplete. Namath was really clobbered on the five-yard line. Nobody could get loose. He is up and hurt. They're going to go for the field goal, Jim. Jim Turner's coming in. Namath is hurt on the far side. He may be just momentarily shaken up. He seems to be moving all right, Joe. Very fine defensive play by the uh, Kansas City Chiefs who stopped them with a yard to go, Jim. It, uh, as we say, this is a, a top team as far as the defense is concerned. A fine goal line stand by Kansas City. Tim Turner with only the most important field goal of the entire season in front of him right now. The ball was down in the air and good. The score, New York Jets 6 and Kansas City 6. There's time out of the field for Jets football in just 60 seconds. Hey, are you an American Motors dealer? Yes, sir. Are you the guy that's going to try to sell me that new little low-priced Hornet? Yes, would you like to... Uh... Say, how come you call it the little rich car anyway? Well, there are a lot of reasons. For one thing, Hornet is the first American car really designed to be a small car instead of just a smaller, cheaper version of a big car. Yeah? Like what? Well, a standard 128 six-cylinder engine, for one thing. And that's bigger than any other car of its kind. Electronically balanced wheels, solid aluminum grill. Uh -huh. But what about options? Well, what do you want? Uh, power steering, power brakes, factory air, 304 cubic inch V8 engine, plaid upholstery. Now, wait a minute. Now, what if I'm not that rich? Then you just say when, anywhere in between. I'll say when, all right. When can I get my Hornet? See Allen Brothers American Motors having the most exciting auto show in Johnstown. Whatever you want in a car, they have it ready for immediate delivery. Allen Brothers American Motors on the arterial Johnstown. New York, the New York Jets have just tied it up in the fourth quarter. New York 6 and Kansas City 6, all the scoring off field goals. The kickoff in Jim Gordon. Coming down around the 10-yard line, Holmes has it up to 10. He's got interference in front of him, cuts towards center field, hit there, and brought down hard. I think it was Jimmy Jones, or it could have been Jim Carroll. Either Carroll or Jones putting his man down around the 20-yard line. I think it was Jimmy Jones again, Jim. He seems to be the first man down uh, with battle right behind him and Carroll right along with him. They've got great speed for such big men, yes. Well, now it is a 6-6 game, and just to review for you, we saw a lot of football time, 12 minutes and 27 seconds. This championship round game cannot finish off in a tie. If it ends upside, we'll have a sudden death period. First team to score is the team that wins. 
but don't go too far away. The eye formation behind Dawson. He fakes the handoff, drops back to his 10 and throws deep over the middle of Otis Taylor. It is completed to the 50, to the 45. Trying to get around Billy Barrett and does. Runs to the 30, to the 25. Pace to the 20 and hits from behind by Al Atkinson. And I don't know how he could downfield that far. Atkinson was a tremendous burst of speed. And I think Atkinson was the only man who had the shot. After that, Taylor was home free. So Kansas City with a tie game 6-6. Now taking Taylor out and Richardson in. Taylor is no slow folk by any stretch of the imagination. He's got good moves that Richardson can fly. Dawson came over and spoke to Hank Stram and has now got the play. Dick Lynch points out that Jim, it was a great call. Uh, he went for the bomb right away and it worked. The eye formation breaks up. He's got Arbanis' tight end on the left side. Hayes and Garrett on the setbacks on either side. Turns around, fakes the handoff. He's still got the ball. Drops back to the 30, throws into the end zone to Richardson. Complete touchdown. Lost to Richardson, complete for a touchdown. Getting behind Cornell Gordon on the first play after the long game by Otis Taylor. Two plays, they went for 80 yards after one of the tightest games we had seen all season. And so the Jets had their work cut out for them now. 11 minutes, Jim. It's a lot of time. Try for the extra point now. Well, six to score. And a big point out here. Santa Cruz is about the... Almost automatic affair here. We'll take the time. It is up and it is good. And the score. The Kansas City Chiefs 13, the New York Jets 6. More Jets football after this for Mobile. <laughs> Honey, you've been bathing for an hour now. Come on out. Oh, just give me five more minutes. What do you do? Get that monster out of our bathtub. What? That's no monster. <laughs> That's our car's engine. What's it doing in the tub? I'm cleaning it. Nah, nah. Help get better mileage. But, honey, look at the ring you're leaving around the tub. Nah. Oh, I, th I think that's a fan belt. <laughs> it's not so dumb wanting to clean your engine. A cleaner engine can help keep your car from stalling. But there's an easier way. Mobile detergent gasoline. Whether you use premium or regular, both blends of mobile help clean the inside of your engine for you. All you do is drive your car. So if you want to help make your car run better, you don't have to give your engine a bath. Just use mobile detergent gasoline. We clean up what most gasolines make dirty. After the kickoff, Mike Battle crosses the ball over the 30-yard line, up to the 32. And the Jets will take over in the fourth quarter, trailing by a score of 13 to 6 with 10 minutes and 51 seconds to go. Namath is still in the game. Drops back, throws to the left side to Snell, who drops the ball as he gets across the 35. That is a tremendous critic of himself for the second time this afternoon. Looks at the picture of absolute disgust. Joe's hitting the potential receivers, Jim. That's, uh, he's doing his part of the job. 13 to 6 is the score. The Jets and their glorious Super Bowl victory and everything has now come down to this final game to see if they can maintain what they established last year. Sauer wide left side. Jake Turner is wide on the right side. I'm sorry, it's Maynard back in the game again. The score to the left side is complete to Sauer at the 40-yard line. And George is run out of bounds there by Emmett Thomas, number 18. It'll be good for a first. First and 10, New York. 10 minutes and 29 seconds to go. We're in the fourth and final period on a chill day in New York City. Gain of about 11. The ball is officially on the 43 before Sauer was run back. Once again, the team breaks the huddle. Maynard wide right side, Sauer wide on the left side. Two setbacks, Mathis and Snell. Name of the sack, get protection, goes to Mathis. Mathis across the 45 and picks up perhaps two more. He is short of the 50 when he is hit from behind by Jimmy Lynch, number 51. 
time remaining, and this will become ever important, ever more important. Nine minutes and 47 seconds. The clock continues to run as the Jets try to cross the midfield line. Davis calls the team set, looks to his right side, he is throwing meant for Maynard, it is incomplete at the 40, Kansas City 40, Maynard was tackled as he lost control of the ball. And the Jets want to try again, third and six, third and six. Ball on the 47, and this is a very, very big play, Jets. Extremely so, they all become big right now, Jim, with time running out, 9.30 to go in the ball game, and the Jets trailing by seven. They have the ball uh, at the 47-yard line of New York, so this uh, third down play is always important, never so open right now. The ball is spotted down on the left side hash mark. Namath is back at the 40, getting a rush. He throws deep to the right side, meant for Maynard. He cannot get to it, cannot get to it. The ball goes out of bounds, and the Jets will be forced to kick with 9 minutes and 26 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. They are too far back for any kind of a field goal attempt, especially the way the wind conditions have been here at Shea Stadium this afternoon. So O'Neill will come in. He'll be standing in Jets territory at about the 32-yard line. He'll be kicking from about the 36. Mike Garrett, one of the deep men, and Willie Mitchell is the second deep man. The punt is in the air. It's a low skimming job, a bounce across the 20-yard line. Down here, it's a big bounce down near the 10 now, and the Jets are going to down it there at the 10-yard line. A big Jet bounce as the ball came down short of the 20, but continued to roll downfield. Nine minutes and 16 seconds of playing time remaining. And the Jets facing oblivion here, 13 to 6 they trail Kansas City. Well, they're going to have to hold the, the uh, Chiefs here, uh, hopefully, Jim, and uh, if they can do that, of course, if they can keep the Chiefs from getting their first down on this series of plays, then the Jets will be in a good position to come back. Well, they trail, remember, by a score by seven points. It means the Jets will have to have a touchdown, and then... Uh, Dawson calls the signals now. Two receivers, one each side wide. A handoff now, and Garrett cracks across the middle and picks up at least five by the looks of it, up to about the 15-yard line. They're down the far end of the field. We'll wait until they unpile and see exactly where the ball is. Ralph Baker made the stop that time. Oh, he has stopped, apparently. Stopped uh, with no gain. Second down is still 10 to go. Eight minutes and 48 seconds to go. Two receivers wide on the right side. Frank Pitts is the inside man there. And Otis Taylor, the man with the fine moves, is the outside man. Both at the 10-yard line. Boston turns around, hands off the backfield to Garrett. Garrett tries the left side of the line and is stopped after a small pickup by Jerry Philbin. I think, Ted, one of the big surprises this afternoon, although people who know Philbin probably won't be too shook up, is the way this man has been able to play with the shoulder separation. He looks good. He has done a magnificent job here this afternoon, Jim. Uh, not very much was expected of him. It was a question mark as to how much he would be able to play. He just played the entire game uh, for the most part on defense. And as you said, early in the game, Kansas City decided to try him, and they found that was a mistake, so they have been going his way too much. Mike Garrett picked up three yards, so it's a third and eight. Dawson is back. He's looking on the right side. He is going incomplete. Incomplete. That's for Pitts on the right side of the line. 
Pitts reached for it at the 30-yard line and couldn't make it, so the Jets hold, and they're going to have to kick. From the 14-yard line, this means the act will be kicking from near the goal line, and the Jets, uh, you can be sure, will be trying to put the rush on, but they'll be also being very, uh, be very careful that they don't uh, hit the punter after he boots the ball. So this could give the Jets the break they've been looking for with seven minutes and 56 seconds of playing time remaining in the game. Gerald Wilson is standing right on the goal line to punt him. Gets ready. So are the Chiefs. The snap back to Wilson. Wilson puts it up into the air. It angles down around the 45-yard line. Gar uh, battles got it across the 40 to the 35. Puts his head down and tries to pick up more. And he's hit by about five men. Suicide Mike Battle. And some of his teammates thought that the Kansas City Chiefs were hitting a little bit too hard. A few words on the field. Battle is made out of nothing but steel wool and barbed wire is all right. Mike was ready to give it the old try that time, as he always is, Jim. And you saw him crouch as he caught the ball, and he planted that right foot deep and took off. But unfortunately, he was down almost immediately. So now, the Jets are putting the ball in play from the Kansas City 38. Namath drops back. He's looking to throw over the middle. It is complete in the 20-yard line of Maynard. Marcellus on the pass coverage down Maynard just across the 20. Maynard with a simple across batter from the right side. Eighteen yard pass play. The Jets are threatening again with the ball now on the Kansas City 19 with seven minutes and nine seconds to go. The clock continues to run. Maynard wide right, Sauer wide left. Mathis and Snell in the backfield. Namath calls his team set now. The snap back. The hand on to Snell who tries the middle and picks up about three. He's down to about the 15-yard line. Six minutes and 46 seconds to go. Six forty-six. John Maynard is not obviously favoring that foot. He's moving well. And with the kind of speed he's got, if that foot is at all near normal, this is a spot where you might be able to get loose. If the ball is on the left side, has mark. Maynard worked on the right side of the line. Now, Sauer comes wide on the left with Maynard wide on the left, both wide on the left side. Two men set in the backfield for New York. Snell and Mathis, name of the getting protection, dropping back. He's going to that right side to Maynard. It is. Incomplete to George Sauer in the cross pattern. It was meant for Sauer at the goal line. As he cut across, Emma Thomas had him all the way. All oh, that beautiful wide open space on the right side, Seth. And, John, and Jim, this will bring up a third and seven play from the Kansas City 16-yard line for the Jets. The interesting conjecture here, of course, is if they don't make the first down on this play, what happens on the fourth? Well, they go for the field goal with six minutes of playing time remaining, or will they go for the touchdown? We'll just wait and see. Just break the huddle now. Maynard again, back on his familiar right side. Sauer wide left. Maynard is back. He's looking to his left. He is throwing in the end goal for Sauer. It is incomplete. Incomplete. Aaron Brown got to Joe Namath again, coming in from right defensive right end, put him down. Well, here it is, Jim, a fourth down play with seven yards to go on the 16-yard line of Kansas City, and I don't see Bake, uh, or I don't see uh, Babe Burley or Jim Turner coming in, so the Jets are going to go for it. Fourth and seven at the Kansas City 16, they trail Kansas City 13 to six, six minutes playing time remaining in this championship game, or rather a preliminary game from the AFL championship. Okay, Jim. Sauer, left side. Maynard, wide right side. Pete Lamont to the tight end, working the right side of the line. Mathis and Snell in the backfield. Namath is looking to Maynard on the right side. He's getting a rush. They're after him. He throws on the dead run. It is incomplete. And Namath is clobbered in the 30-yard line. Aaron Brown got to him. Joe is up. And he is limping slightly, but moving. 
And so, once again, Kansas City for the second time in the afternoon with the chips are really down are able to hold. Well, the Chiefs were putting on a good rush that time, and they're holding Namath back there, and all he could do was run laterally across the field uh, from the near side to the far side of the field, trying to find somebody to throw to. He finally did find uh, a relief man, uh, who he, a release man, who he thought he could get, but the ball fell short and harmless into the earth. We have a timeout on the field now. The score, Kansas City 13 and New York 6. Now, here's the message from Valentine. on the play. He is thrown on the field down at about the 30-yard line. And they're ministering to him now. As soon as uh, Jim Gordon has the uh, field glasses on him, as soon as the uh, little group huddled around him gets away, we'll identify him for you. Five minutes and 33 seconds playing time remaining in the game. Kansas City has the ball at zone 22, second down, four yards to go, and play is resumed. They lead the Jets by score 13 to 6 in this playoff game in the American Football League. The winner of this game will play the winner of tomorrow's game between Oakland and Houston for the American Football League Championship on January 4th. Jim, Mo Mormon is dead apparently. Plays on the right side of E.J. Hollop. And Mormon is walking off under his own steam, but he's a little bit wobbly. He looks to be not cold. He hasn't moved for a long time after they put him down, and his knees aren't locking yet. So Foreman is out. He took a, a real hard shot around the 10-yard line. The Chiefs have the lead, 13 to 6. The clock is running in their favor. 5:33 to go in the game. They're deep in their own territory, though. The ball in the 22-yard line, and Len Dawson was love to get out of there. Dawson drops back, hands off now to draw, gets across the line of scrimmage. That's about as far as they get. Jerry Philbin comes tracking across to make the stop. Five minutes and 23 seconds, the clock continues to run. Third down with four yards to go. And again, one of those big third down plays. It's going to be third and about two, Jim. Third and two, right. The uh, scoreboard clock, play one to the 24-yard line. So third down and two to go for Kansas City. And right here, this is a big one right here. This is uh, one of the biggest ones of the game right here. Wendell Hayes and Mike Garrett are uh, the running backs. They have them lined up now behind Len Dawson. Two receivers wide on the left side. Otis Taylor and uh, Frank Fitz. Turns around, hands off for the line play, and he might have been stopped. Short of the first down. Looks like Philbin coming in again. Along with Ralph Baker. He had to get over the 25, but from here it doesn't look like he made it, Jim. He did not. The teams are changing. Even a good kick from here, of course, if the Jets are able to hang on, will put them in fairly good position. If the Kansas City Chiefs are able to unload it, and the Jets will be cracking. Fourth and one to go. They've got the punt. The punter back in the 10-yard line. It is back. 
Ball in the air, not carrying too far, just around the 50. Comes down near the outside line and goes out of bounds around the 45-yard line of the New York Jets with three minutes and 51 seconds remaining in the game. This is going to be about the most important three minutes and 51 seconds of playing time the Jets have had all season. They're down to Kansas City by a score of 13 to 6. They see their world championship going out the window if they lose this one. Ball is on the 44 yard of New York. The New York Jets come out of the huddle and up to the line of scrimmage, and here again is Jim Gorsky. Big Turner is back in, his wide receiver right side. Sauer was offside on the play. Flag down as Amos unloads. It is complete to Turner at the 40 yard line. I'm sure this one's out about the count. Sauer really went across the line of scrimmage. Unless it's an offsetting penalty, that one should cost them. And the Jets are being set back. Three minutes and 45 seconds to go. 3.45. We're at the fourth and final period offside New York. I can't ever remember seeing Sauer go across like that. I don't either, Jim. It's about the first time I believe that he's done that. The Kansas City Chiefs only working with about two linebackers. They got six men back, so they're looking for Namath's pass work. One, one single linebacker. First and 15 to go for New York. Namath is back to his all 30. He's getting a rush. He throws. It is incomplete for the 50 yard line. Incomplete. Incomplete at the 50-yard line. So it'll be second down with 15 to go. Second and 15, and Kansas City is really putting a rush on Joe Namath now. Yes, they are. They're going back there on every play. Every time Joe goes back, they go right back with him. They follow him right back. And, of course, they rush him passing, and uh, this makes for inaccuracy, as we saw that time. So it's the second and 15. From the 39-yard line for New York Jets, they're on 39. With wide receivers, two of them on the right side and on the left now for New York. And Namath drops back to his 30 and throws to the right side. Meant for Snell, it is he overthrows him at the 45-yard line. Clock stops with three minutes and 35 seconds to go. Third down and still 15 big ones. Kansas City trails New York 3-0. Decided with the field goal by Center Root in the second quarter, 3-3. Three, three. Then picked up the big one, and this is the fourth quarter. The only touchdown of the game. Billy Mathis goes out now for New York. Jeff taking plenty of time. Matt Snell and Everson Boozer in the backfield. Boozer goes out as a wide receiver to the left side inside George Starr. Two men also wide on the right side. Namath is back. No time for caution now. Throws over the middle. It is complete across the 50-yard line. And down as he gets across to about the 44-yard line. It'll be good enough for the first down, and that's what they were looking for. And with the pressure really on Joe Namath, he makes the biggest completion of the afternoon. The clock continues to run on the completed pass. It is 13-6 Kansas City, and the Jets are across midfield. Real big play by Namath, which puts the ball in Kansas City territory exactly where he wanted it. The only thing better would have been a pass that went all the way. This was the big one they needed, and they got it. Namath drops back. He's looking to throw for the 50. It is complete the power across the 30. And he is down in his tracks by Thomas. Down near the 25-yard line, Jim. It's going to be another first down. 27-yard line of Kansas City. First and 10 for the Jets. Two minutes and 38 seconds playing time remaining. Ball on the 27. First and 10. Twice this afternoon, Kansas City is held in critical situations when the Jets seem to be marching for a touchdown. They'll be called upon for the third time now with the ball inside the 30. Mathis and Boozer at the setback. Receivers wide left and right. Namath looking to his right side is throwing deep on the right side. It is complete. No, he's out of bounds. They're waving it off. No, waving it off. He's out of bounds. He was 
was out in the corner. It was meant for Pete Wilder to his body foul. He had the ball, but he was out of bounds. One foot in and one foot out. So it goes, Jim, as the long incompletion. And while they're coming back, we have this opportunity. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Jets Radio Network. Your New York Jet Station in Amsterdam, New York. This is WCSS. One minute after 4 o'clock, temperature 22 degrees. So the New York Jets will have to try it again. Second and 10 to go on the 27. Lamas couldn't keep them both inbound. On a beautiful, beautiful throw by Joe Namath. Big turner wide right side. Sauer wide and left side. Set back. He's back at the 40 to throw. He is throwing deep into the end zone. To Sauer it is. Incomplete. Incomplete. Thomas with a beautiful move in the end zone. Battered it down. Emmett Thomas went way up in the air. Aaron Brown, number 87, the defensive right side for Kansas City. Hurt his leg. He's going out. Cross number 74 comes in. See Billy Mathis fighting him at the sideline. Emerson Boozer is back in for New York. Now Chuck Hurston, number 85, takes the cross's place. Third and 10 to go. Again, the big third out. Have a lot of them this afternoon. Two minutes and six seconds remaining in the game. We're coming down to the wire. Turner wide right, star wide left. Boozer and Snell the setback. Back goes Joe Namath, looking to his right side. Going to Turner, it is no good. Almost intercepted. There's a flag down at the line. There's a flag down. Jim Marcellus was covering. The flag is not near the coverage spot. Let's see what the call is. It looks like it might be against Kansas City. There's no change yet. Hold on. No change yet. We'll wait for the call. Kansas City is saying no change on the Jets lineup right now. Talking things over with the New York Jets. We have no indication yet. Marching it off against Kansas City. It's a big one. Moving the ball across the 15 and downing it around the 13-yard line. We've got just a second to go for the two-minute warning. The ball is on officially the 14-yard line, first and 10 to York. The Jets. First and ten on the Kansas City 14. Namath looking deep, getting a rush, throwing into the end zone. It is incomplete. Incomplete. It will be second down for the Jets with ten yards to go. Remember that if this game ends in a tie, we'll have a sudden death playoff period immediately following. That's what the Jets are counting on now. Get on the scoreboard with a touchdown, tie it up and then go into that overtime if necessary. With a minute 55 to go. Everybody here, 62,977 fans on their feet as we come down to the closing seconds of the game. And again, here is Jim Gordon. They are set now. Joe Namath calls the team set. Boozer goes in motion to the left side. Namath is back looking to his right. Now to his left, into the end zone. The ball is thrown and incomplete at the five. Incomplete at the five. One minute and 50 seconds to go. 150. Third down, but 10 yards still to go for New York. 13 to 6 to score, Kansas City. Joe Namath and the New York Jets facing the end of this whole long road here. Sauer and Turner are both wide on the right side. Pete Lammons is wide on the left side. Two setbacks from Namath, and now Boozer goes in motion to the left. Namath drops back. He's looking toward the end zone. Into the right corner it is. Intercepted in the end zone. Run down to the five-yard line and down there with a minute and 42 seconds to go. Jim Marsalis. As the Jets on court 
their final trapped in this series of downs with 142 to go, and now they must get the ball, Ted. Jim Marcellus, the rookie, has made his second critical interception of the afternoon. Earlier, he intercepted one on the, on the Chiefs' 10-yard line when the Jets had a good drive going. Namath had brought them down to about the 25-yard line of Kansas City, and he threw a pass uh, down on the 10-yard line, intercepted by Jim Marcellus. This time, he threw for the end zone, and again, Marcellus got in front of the intended receiver, intercepted it, and brought it out to the 7-yard line. He was nailed on most of his tracks, but the important thing is, from Kansas City's standpoint, that he intercepted the pass, and the Chiefs have the ball to first in ten of their own seven, with a minute and 42 seconds playing time remaining in the game. Kansas City has taken a timeout here. They have uh, two timeouts remaining, and the Jets have three. I'm not sure if this is being charged to Kansas City or not. Actually, you should recall, they took a timeout when Mo Mormon got injured, uh, on a play a few moments ago, so possibly this timeout is not being charged. It's immaterial at the moment, actually, because the uh, Chiefs have a 13 to 6 lead with a minute 42 to go. The ball at their own 7 first and 10. Okay, Jim. Jets still have three timeouts remaining to them, and in tough shape here, 13 to 6. They're running the ball on the ground. Garrett runs along the goal line. He's hit from behind, hit and dragged down inside the five yard line. The clock continues to run. Now the Jets are calling for time, and the clock stops at 1.33, Jet. One minute and 33 seconds to go. Where the Jets deep in Kansas City territory, but they don't have the ball. Paul Crane made that stop. Well, this is, the only, this is the only thing left for the Jets to do. Call time, save as much of the clock as they can, hoping that they'll be able to stop Kansas City's drive Forced, uh, possibly forced a fumble in there deep in Kansas City territory. Any number, uh, deep in Jets territory, rather. Any number of things might happen. Uh, so uh, they're doing all they can do here. Now the ball has been moved back to the four-yard line with the loss of the play on, of, of three on the play. So it'll be second and 13. That's sort of academic at the moment. Kansas City really doesn't care how much they have to go just so long as they maintain possession of the ball with only a little over a minute and a half remaining on the clock. So the Jets, of course, as I said, they're trying to force a fumble here deep in Chiefs territory. Wendell Hayes has replaced Mike Garrett. Dawson again stays on the ground, of course, a minute and a half to go. Plunges across the five-yard line, picks up perhaps two. And just one minute and 28 seconds as the New York Jets again fall time. Again, we want to remind our listeners that Joe Hassel will be on the air from the Jets locker room right after the game, talking with the Jets, no matter which way it goes, discussing the game. So be sure to stay tuned for our locker room show with Joe Hassel right after the game. Right now, minute 28 to go, it's a little dark for the Jets at the moment. In fact, considerably dark at this point, but uh, there's still those 88 seconds of playing time remaining on the clock. And now we have a third down play for Kansas City. They'll have one more play. The Jets will definitely get the ball. The Kansas City will have one more play. Unless they can move it off well, ball's on the seven-yard line. There are ten yards to go. Unless Kansas City can pick up those ten yards right here, they'll have to cross the Jets will have the ball again. We have received word from the press box here that New York does not have any timeouts remaining, although the clock shows one. Now it has been changed to zero. No timeout left for New York. Ball is on the seventh, third down and ten yards to go for the Kansas City Chiefs in their own territory, and they lead by a score of 13 to 6. The clock will continue to run if they're able to hang on to the ball and run it on the ground. Dawson hands off. Ball goes to his left side, hit from behind, hit hard, behind the line of scrimmage, and slammed down. Now the team's changed, but remember the clock is continuing to run as Larry Grant and Dr. Holmes can really put him down. One minute and 12 seconds, 111. There'll be 109 to go. There'll be well under a minute playing time remaining when the punt actually gets off. Gerald Wolf will be kicking from the end zone. Right now, there's a minute playing time remaining. Now it's under a minute. So the Jets will have time to run back the punt and not, not an awful lot more. Whether they'll have time to get a play underway or not, we don't know as yet. 49 seconds to go right now. 
Wilson Mike, standing deep in the end zone, Jim. Mike Babble is at the 45-yard line. The ball is up in the air, high, coming down around the 40-yard line. Battle drops the ball. Kansas City's got it. Mike Battle couldn't hold it. And Kansas City downs the ball short of midfield with the clock showing 36 seconds to go. Rather strange thing there, Jim, is, uh, you know, Mike Battle almost never signals for a fair catch. And, uh, however, that time he did. And uh, as he signaled for the fair catch, the ball came off his outstretched hand and was recovered instantly by Kansas City. So the Chiefs have the ball. The clock is running now. 27 seconds. They may get a playoff here, may not. I don't actually should get one off. But uh, actually, uh, all they have to do is hang on to it. They've got a 13 to 6 lead. Many of the fans are leaving the stadium now. All right, here comes Kansas City for the final play of the game, Jim. Twelve seconds to go, and the long season is about to come to an end with the New York Jets. The ball is going to the 40-yard line, six seconds, five to go, and it's going to be way till next year. Two seconds showing on the clock, one, and the world champion New York Jets are out of the playoffs. The final score, Kansas City 13 and New York 6. Well, that final score again was 13 for the Kansas City Chiefs, 6 for the New York Jets. Stay tuned for our post-game show and Joe Hassel's interviews from the Jets locker room. We'll have more Jets football in just 60 seconds. 